And it looks like we're live. Welcome to Season 7, Episode 12 of the Musty War Gamer Show. And you can see that uh, someone's missing tonight, and he's been excommunicated. <laughs> excommunicated. <laughs> Ooh, that sounds serious. Yeah, excommunicated. That doesn't sound good at all. Yes. Yeah. See if they can guess who it was. He's been uh, John Wicked. <laughs> yeah. At least for this week. See, Chris is here. Yes, Chris is here. Hey, Chris. Yeah, it's like uh, word didn't go out very much this week about uh, we're having a show, so maybe people don't know what's going on. But even though I put the uh, thing up on my channel saying we're going to have a show. You know, it would have helped if I had done that. I mean, yeah. Well, they probably just come to see Palmer. Yeah. <laughs> we're, so, just, we're just, we're just, uh, what you call sidekicks. Yeah. We're like yeah. the warm up band or something. We're, you know, people aren't really here to see us. It's Palmer and Who's these guys? Where's Palmer? Palmer or nobody. Yeah. <laughs> hey, watch I'm taking guys. my toys and going away. Yeah. Taking my uh, toys and going home. That's fine. I'll get some yeah. paint done either way. Yeah, one way or the other, we're going to have something going on. Yeah, that. True enough. So true. Uh, what are you guys up to? What have you been up to in the last two weeks? Last two weeks? Uh, well, I got some winged hussars painted. Was, oh, yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah. We did the, the in search of, and I did find who made those things, so. Did you or those the ones you just posted up on the yeah. Facebook group? Yeah, those. Are the yeah, ones I just, just saw them this evening. Yep. Yeah, they. Uh, are the all the lances, I yeah. snipped them all off because I kept trying to straighten them out, and <laughs> every time I, you know, got them, they just break somewhere, and it's like, God. So I just snipped them off, put wires on them, and. What would you use for lances? Time. Huh? What'd you use for Lancet? Excuse me. Uh, let's see. Uh, 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 there we go. It's got some of those for the lance itself. I just got this little bit. If I can learn to go the right direction. Yeah, it's real thin wire. I got it at Hobby Lobby. Is it like it's piano like, wire or something? No, nah, it's it's hobby stuff. I mean, I wish More I had I did. Okay. I'll send you a link, uh, Dan. I did find just this week uh, one mil um, wire that you can get on Amazon. Okay. It costs you about 10 bucks, and you get about 10 feet of it. Oh, that that would make uh, a couple of Bretonian lances right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I was okay. looking at Thanks. using yeah. some wire, one mil wire to use as... Uh, standards or uh, oh, that's true. Yep, or as uh, center stands for VTOLs for Battletech. Oh, yeah, sure. Because I've been using uh, two and a half uh, inch nails before, and they sort of work, yeah. Well, this gives you a lot more flexibility. Yeah, you can get increase the height to them. If yeah, you want. it can kind of do it. Yeah, in, in unlimited length restrictions. Yeah, and that's cool. So, other than the wing lancers, uh, Tim, that uh, anything else you've been working on? Uh, no, I've had a lot of uh, family issues. I've had to take care of my ninety-three-year-old mother. Has been needing a. A lot more attention here lately, and I've been spending them a lot of my time taking care of family stuff. So yeah. that's uh, yeah. I was lucky I got basic. Yeah, you know, sometimes you just gotta do the adult stuff and move on. You know. Yeah, yeah. but that's true. I am the uh, transport. I did, I, did work on, I did work on my uh, painting desk, and you know, I I did that video where I was. Uh, I just ran into a wall, you know, just yeah. ran into that painter's block. I just, bleh, 
just did not want to pick up a paintbrush. Mm -hmm. And uh, I couldn't figure out what was going on. And, and I think a lot of it stemmed from just where I was painting. It, it was like everything from on my painting table was creeping out and I was having less and less space to actually paint and do yeah. what it was supposed to be designed for. And so the, the shelving I had was like one foot wide, 48 inches long. I put a ton of stuff on there, but I'd fill that up and then my desk would fill up. And, you know, I've got all this stuff behind me that's shelving them. And it just got, I think what it was, I just got into so many projects when I, especially when I'm doing a long project, like the Macedonian thing, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. it just, it turns into a disaster area. And I think that's yeah. what happens. So I went out and I got some uh, smaller shelving, like seven inch wide, went three high, organized this mess behind me. Much better. It's much better, better lighting. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I think that had something to do with it. It was just the space was just, the project was big. The space was getting all cluttered up and it just, it wore on me. And I've had a change. Yeah, I have that problem. It's like right now I have a whole bunch of uh, Star Wars Rebel Legion models parked on my desk that have been here for about a half a year that need to be put in a container to move them off to the side or get them done. One of the two. Yeah. It's like one thing or the other, but make something happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that has a tendency. And I, for the last two months, I've had Battletech Manager sitting on my desk here, too. That I have all intention of painting them, but right now I've just been on this Tomb King's kick right now. Something about the old world coming out or something. Yeah, but I think this might be the last Tomb Kings model I'm going to be working on for a while. So I then I'm going to, yeah. I think I'm going to work on is clean my desk off of all the projects and then I'll start working on something else. There you go. You got something that's kind of calling your name or? Well, it's old world still, but. Um, no way. It might be either Bretonians or Skaven or High Elves or. Dark are you doing? Are you painting a project for somebody else? Well, Jesse has his. He bought that box of. Yep. Bretonians. Mm -hmm. That star, big starter box. So he has that, and he bought a uh, box of those uh, foot knights too. Oh, he did. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people are absolutely loving them. And, and I've seen some nice painted stuff starting to show up on the Bretonian Facebook groups. Cool. Oh, did he get I, them in the store? I, yeah. I'm, wow. They're, like I said, there's another couple boxes of the uh, Bretonian sitting here in, in town. Oh, the starter set, you mean? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Huh. That's what I was trying to tell you. Yeah. Well, I thought you said there was. Yeah, I thought the one thing you said there was one Tomb Kings and one Bretonian box or something. Yeah, was, you can find the Bre the Tomb Kings boxes pretty much a, everywhere because nobody seems little, to want those. Yeah, not as. If I didn't have as many Tomb Kings already, mm -hmm. I would probably have bought one. But mm -hmm. you know, I have a massive Tomb Kings army, so it's not like I need more of those things. That's kind of well, why I didn't go so off of need. <laughs> There's wants and needs. Yeah, yeah I may but even want it, but I don't need it. But even even using the word need in a hobby context is, is yeah, <laughs> that's uh, stretching okay. the definition the definition of need quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. So, how about you, Dan? What have you been up to? Uh, I'm kind of in Tim's same boat too. This whole year has been kind of a family health issue, which has kept me kind of off balance and consuming a lot of my time. Um, 
But anyway, but I am still doing some hobby or I would go bananas. So this is my happy space. Yeah. And yeah, so same things. Uh, working on more uh, terrain for my Stalingrad. Zoom you in here for a second. All right. There you go. Last week I was gluing this All together. Right. It's a, yeah. Was well, that the one you put the floor in? Yeah, I put the floor in. Uh, and it all came in pieces. Um, these top pieces were separate. The two big walls were separate. And then, yeah, then I added the interior walls. I added the steps. Um, yeah, and I, I do that all. That's all. Um, make all the floor joists and the floorboards all just out of craft sticks from, like, Hobby Lobby. Yeah. And I add some detail to the base, which you maybe can't see, but a lot of rubble piles. There's a, there's a ruined uh, table and a chair and lots of brick and stuff that'll be fun to pick out. Um, and what I did, I've got a second one here. And so, and I cut it so that it can be put together like that, right together, puzzles together. Yeah. Or I could, do, I could do it like that, you know, or separate it out bigger to make a bigger footprint. Um, so anyway, so I get, that's the thing I like to do with the train is make it as modular as possible. Uh, a lot of detail, a lot of realism, but so that, you know, you, cause I, I really like those boards people make where it's uh you know, two foot square sections or whatever, and, and it's all built in, then they've dug in trenches. And I mean, it looks awesome as far as like, you know, diorama quality type stuff. But, you know, I, I just, I've done those kind of things before and pretty soon you start to learn, well, that's about, that's about 12 inches from that trench to that next foxhole. And, and no matter how you rotate those, you know, two foot square boards, it gets a little samey. And so I'm trying to make mine just completely modular. So you almost can't even recognize, you know, the terrain, even though it's the same pieces over and over, yeah. uh, which I think is important in bolt action because terrain is, so, you interact so intimately with the terrain. It's not just eye candy. It's, you know, it's important to the way the game functions. Yeah. So anyway, so yeah, continuing to do that. I'm really, getting close so behind me i've got i put the last few buildings together and so yeah i'm thinking the next well i'm gonna start getting in the field here shortly but um i probably got just a couple months of work left and i'll have that table what i would call done where i'd just be adding some more details yeah so, pretty that's excited cool. about that that's been fun that's that's been me i got a question you got that t-shirt yeah. you're wearing number nine. Oh yeah casey kane i was a big casey kane fan back because I, I was uh always a dodge fan and yeah. so he, he he uh ray abraham was the yeah. crew chief and they when dodge re-entered nascar and i was all about that and so yeah i was i was a huge casey kane fan of course he doesn't drive nascar anymore but Still got the old shirts. They outlived his career. <laughs> yeah. Like the old number nine used to be Bill. Yeah, Bill Elliott. Yep. Yeah. Awesome yep. Bill from Dawsonville. So. Yep. Now his son, Chase Elliott, drives. And yeah, he's I know. Very competitive. I used to be a huge NASCAR fan that I would watch every race, tape every race, and rewatch it, you know. Oh, man. I would listen to him on the radio if I was in the combine or. And oh, then, yeah. I mean, I was. I was pretty addicted to I didn't have cable back back then or anything so I couldn't watch a lot of the races but I'd listen to them on the radio and the radio coverage is actually excellent yeah <laughs> but, but then I kind of drifted away they've changed the way the races work with the stage racing um where they have the different stages and uh I don't know and then I've gotten a little more environmentally conscious and it's kind of eh, it's kind of painful <laughs> Well, I, I got away from it due to the fact that it's, like you said, it's got the stage racing. The points don't work the same anymore. Cars are pretty much the same. Yeah, it's this cookie just cutter. It's like watching I Rock, and I'm like, this is yeah. not NASCAR. I mean, it's still impressive. I mean, it's still incredible what the speeds and the, and the precision and the quality of driving. But I don't know. I think I just kind of outgrew it a little bit. But. But they are bringing a NASCAR race to Iowa this year, Rusty. And I, I actually, know. my brothers and I got tickets because I've never been to one in my life. And, oh, you haven't? Uh, no. And 
So they're they're going to be uh, at Iowa Speedway, first time ever. And so, yeah, yeah so we're going to make a Brother's Day of it. Yeah, I seen that they had the, when the tickets went on sale, I looked at, and I was like, oh, yeah, I got to get, and then, no, I'm not going to get it. <laughs> like yeah, the, my younger price. brother, is, well, he was always a huge NASCAR fan. And he used to be a Rusty Walls fan back in the old days, and he. Uh, that was his track he, he built. So. Yep, yep. And he, so he gave me a heads up that that was coming and he lives over near, near the, he lives, uh, near Norwalk, near Des Moines there. And he said, Hey, you want to go if I can get tickets? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Let's do this. So yeah. So we'll make, we'll have a fun time regardless of how the race goes. Yeah. I was, uh, the last race I went to was down at, um, Kansas Speedway. Yeah, I always thought I'd get down there when I built that track, and I just, of course, it's always in the fall. And that's when I'm in the yeah. field. No way can I go. Yeah, I think the Iowa Speedway should be fun though, because it's being a smaller track. It should be one that be you know kind of fun to be at, as opposed to some of those larger tracks. I always wondered if you feel like you're even at the race. <laughs> well, yeah, you go like to Talladega or or Daytona. Oh gosh. Couple miles, you know, you can't hear yeah, like, like, oh, the way, like <laughs> we're, we're way back there, <laughs> can't see what's happening, but yeah, anyway, sorry, enough, enough on the racing, <laughs> but, yeah, yep, that's my that's sure. another hobby we got, that's another thing going, yeah. All right, we got some, let's say, Matt S came in and said, I want to talk about my favorite scout mech, the Atlas 2C, <laughs> the 100 ton beast. Rusty doesn't know anything about Battletech. <laughs> yeah, that's the wrong group to be asking any battle. Tech, but... <laughs> My God. You've probably done a special uh, deep deep dive on that particular mech, right? <laughs> uh, let's see. What book is that one in? Atlas 2C. I probably have. You've done a lot of them. Yeah, I have. <laughs> <laughs> he asked the question are there any good toys to buy these days at Walmart or Target or dollar store that can be converted to Battletech I never see anything uh, it's usually a matchbox or the uh, you know that kind of stuff and I haven't seen anything forever it used to be a time when you could get uh, some stuff that was you know that would work pretty decently but not anymore since they changed the scale up a bit hmm. looks like we got someone else watching tonight we got three people watching all right so for me my little update um I can't remember. Did I show off all my infantry I finished last time? Uh, what kind of infantry was it? The Tomb King's the... infantry. See, I always get confused because I've seen it on Facebook, so I don't know if it was during the show. Yeah, I, it's like... it. <laughs> no, I, I, think, I think I think you showed them on Facebook last week. Yeah, that's maybe what, that's what I want to say. I'm not sure that I've seen I got it all on these the guys. Show. Oh like yeah, fifty infantry here. Uh, blow Flat. your screen up. Uh, we can see you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Not blow it off, blow it up. <laughs> yeah. Wow. There we Damn. Go. <laughs> yeah, that's oh. yeah, I don't think Excuse you showed me. that on the show. Yeah, maybe it did. It's hard to remember. I, I just, know. I can't remember either. Things kind of awesome. blend together. Yeah, a couple weeks is a long time for us old people. <laughs> I don't yeah, remember a thing. I don't remember. I had those. Started Ooh. working on that. Or finished those. And then I I do know I did not have these guys done um last time. Oh yeah. Oh, are these yeah. are these the new ones that you bought here or are these ones you had? This is what I had. These are the old BSB. Okay. So I knew they released some new something. Yeah. Well they released these. Ooh. You could buy these. That's what I was trying to say, yeah. Yeah, when they did the, uh, you could buy Tomb King stuff, this was some of the stuff you could buy. Was it made to order, or was yeah, it? Yeah, made to order. Yeah. And I already, it's like, oh, I already have a bunch of these. 
That's I put I these on say. the 25 mil bases and because I wanted th this BSB so top heavy on the 20 yeah. mil base, he just top. Yeah, it flop over it. like a flop of crappie. Yeah, because <laughs> that's a big giant chunk of metal up there. Yeah, and the same thing is said, you know, because he's got this big giant glaive like. Uh, Yep, up in there. We'll put it way up in the air, way out to the side. Makes them pretty tippy, yeah. Yeah. So that's your metal, the old that's style. Cool. I like the blue. You know, everybody. I wish I like the other people. A lot of times use the turquoisey. Yeah, that's nice. That's something a little different. The only problem is, is that uh, with my howdah that's on my uh, Tomb King's dragon, he doesn't fit in there. Um, I can try to slide them. It's like a 20 mil base. Because it's 25 mil, mil base does not fit in there. Um, Was it 3D printed? Yeah. And you can't, you can make just that one piece bigger or not? I probably could. Be a lot of work. Yeah. Well, it just means I have to print another one. But Yeah. So I got it's that. Hot. I finished those guys. I still I finished them last week. I know that much. And then. Uh, I think in the last show, I showed off this guy, my little dragon. Yep, you were painting on him, I think. Yeah, I did. I finished putting all the blue on him last yep, week. Yep, that's what I Last show, and I never haven't touched him since. To say it looks about the same, yeah. <clears throat> that's okay. Because I started working on this guy. Yeah. There we go. Nice. Oh, yeah. There you go. The dragon. Enter the that's dragon. That's like life size. Yeah. So when you, you put a standard uh, human size model next to it, it's like, it's pretty big. Yeah, that's big. That's Age of Sigmar big. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing is that we're kind of talking off show is that, you know, everything has been supersized. You know, this is a 100 by 150 sized base. Yeah. they got to be starting to get to the limit of what they can keep scale creeping it. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it when it comes to scale creep. I mean, you're going to need to have an eight-foot square table just to play a game. And I, I printed, 3D printed off this uh, uh, monolith there. It was one solid piece, and then I broke it in pieces. He accidentally dropped it a few times. <laughs> I used a uh, chisel. Oh. And I was like, like, just took the chisel and went. <laughs> gave it a pop. Well, it looks pieces really went good. Flying. Yeah, I bet. Which is fine. And then I looks glued good. it to the table or the, the base here. Use an MDF base or what are you or what are you using? Uh this is a standard uh speaking of bases. Games workshop base. Yeah. Oh. Uh this was supposed to be for my Kadai destroyer for my uh Chaos Dwarf Army. Oh, okay. I just repurposed it for my dragon. Well, that's fair enough. My Kadai destroyer is in the sitting in the wings. And if you don't know what a Kadai destroyer is, it's a big giant know. demon engine of destruction for the Chaos Dwarves. That's about the size of that dragon. Okay. It's big. And let's see here. I do have a drink tonight. Oh, good. I got a little bit of uh, Glen Murray scotch. No. Scotch. 12 year old. Dang. Like I say, every time you come over, if you want a 12 year old, just let me know. There, I've never had a 12 year old anything except child at one point. <laughs> I have had several. But that ship has sailed. The other. They just aged longer, right? Yeah, they aged, yeah. Well, now you have, what, a year, one-year-old grin? He'll be two in June. Yeah. Yeah, oh, he's a treat. Oh, my gosh. Somebody said grandkids would be this much fun. I would have had them first. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's got some apple pear aspect to it. Mm. Cool. That tastes good. I had uh, a rum and coke this evening with my wife and um, I tried the Kraken rum. 
Yeah. She can get wall to wall wine. Uh, they have it, one of those in Omaha and they had it on sale. It was cheaper than Captain Morgan on sale. And yeah. I was a little skeptical. Um, but dang, it's good. It, it is. I yeah, really it's got like some it. caramel taste to it. Caramel. That's the biggest thing. It's got the caramel taste. It mixed in with the Coke. Oh man, that's a nice, that's a nice new flavor to go with for a while. Yeah. I do have some up in the cabinet. Um, I can't believe it's that affordable. That's like uh, 12 to $18, I think, a bottle. I think the, well, at least where I got it, for the for the larger bottle, I forget what size that is. It was 21 Okay. On sale. Yeah, I think a 750 liter. Um, yeah, 750. That's that's what it is. Yeah. You can get it on sale. It's like when Hy-Vee has their uh, uh, fall spirit sale. Mm-hmm. You can pick it up pretty cheaply. Anyway, good stuff. We got Chris Walkabout Games. Hey, Chris. He's back. He's back. Did he go running away and came back? Must have. Yeah. Or did he just walk yeah. away? <laughs> Tim made it funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised Palmer hasn't popped in the chat just to say hi. Yeah. Well, you get slub status, you know. <laughs> slub status. <laughs> Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm not happy with my horses out of this box. Boy, are they! these are so old. They're old sculpts. They're old plastic horses. Are They're God. They're just God awful. Warlord? Yeah. Mm. They're out of the, you know, like I said, they're the, the Dragoon set. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. thinking seriously about going with my, uh, just getting out my... Um, War Games Atlantic, they have a box of just horses, and I've oh, used, okay. used them before. I'm oh. thinking about, I mean, I've put a couple of these guys together, and I'm just, I'm just not happy. To, they, kind, they kind of look like mules. <laughs> yeah. Mules. They look well, like maybe, mules. Maybe that's appropriate for back then. Who knows, right? Uh, I don't know. Well, I mean, they are for dragoons and stuff. They wouldn't have, like, war horses, but, God, they're just. At this great big gap between their uh, oh, just poor the models, neck, the neck and the bo body. Just, I mean, it's something that have to be filled in, and it you can almost you can actually see it there without even blowing up the screen. Oh, you can actually yeah. see the gap in yeah. that. Are those metal? No, they're plastic. Oh, okay. well, there's no redeeming qualities left then. <laughs> They don't fit well, and they're not metal. So, yeah, well, but the uh, what, I can I can just you probably haven't seen any of those like the Mantic uh, mounts. Those I are pretty seen. bad too. Are they some of their older stuff? Because I, I yeah. think the stuff's gotten a lot better. People say. Yeah, the original first stuff they came out with were like, oh boy. Yeah, well, the bright side was they were like half the price of GW. So, you know, if you're on a budget and you weren't. I don't think they were good. even half the price. I think they were like a quarter. At the yeah, they, they might have been. They were way cheaper anyway. Uh, yeah, they were nothing to write got, about. No, but I know some of their later stuff, They've people have commented how it's really, you know, fairly respectable. Or some of them are quite good. I don't know. Yeah, they they started doing those Kickstarters and putting money into them. Mm -hmm. Well, it's an expensive investment for them to make those molds and stuff. So, yeah. Oh, I did. Yeah, back. Gonna... Go ahead, Tim. I was going to say if I'm going to have if I'm going to keep these, they're going to need a. They're going to lead an awful lot of love. 
<laughs> I mean, they're gonna a lot of extra work. Those ones. Well, maybe that's a, maybe that's a challenge, right? I've done that before. Where you're like, I can make something out of these. <laughs> But yeah, sometimes the motivation well, isn't there. I guess. <laughs> yeah, I know. I didn't want my, my hobby to turn into a job, but that's uh well that's like that way. Yeah. Then it's no good. Yeah, that's true. Good point. Yeah, it's uh, always look at if it can't be solved with green stuff, then you got problems. Yeah. Yeah. And if I think I am all out of that sort of material. That's not good. Yeah, because most of the stuff I've had is didn't need to have it. I mean. Well, so many of the models these days are so good. And then, you know, if you're a little handy yeah. modeler, you can a lot of times between some filing or some you know, tweaking, you can get them to fit pretty good before you glue it anyway, so then you don't need much green stuff, if any. I was trying to figure out like, Especially with those 3D prints, like uh, mm -hmm. those uh, winged hussars I got done, the horses were more detailed than the riders. Oh, you really? Know, they had more stuff on them to deal with than the actual riders. Uh, <laughs> they were just, it was like, okay, Why are you torturing me this way? So who, what, what uh, manufacturer, what, what uh, company were the three D sculpts? Is it something I would know? Uh, I can tell you in a second. Uh, yeah, Chris, uh, the Chris asked well, which horses are those? Are they, they're the ones from the Dragoon set, uh, the English Civil War, from uh, Warlord Games. They're, uh, Did you say it's a old pretty old, and, old? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This this is this is a set they've had since I think they first started. Okay. And uh, it's, it's Highland Miniatures. Oh, Highland. Yep. They do some nice Bretonian type stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Or from what I've seen, I mean, I haven't had any in in my hand, but they look and amazing. You can yeah. buy the uh, 3D uh, fi the files to do the 3D printing. It was only 20 bucks. Wow. Yeah. yeah I, think, I think those are the same ones um, I've got for the Hal that I bought the Halberdiers and the two handed sword guys. Okay. Yeah. They. Uh, Yeah, there's, I got. Uh, I have forty of those. <laughs> I forget, Tim. Do you have a printer, or are you buying the models? No, I bought these. Gosh, I bought these back in twenty twenty one, twenty twenty two, something like that. Okay. I was, I was, I was really dead set on starting a. Um, oh, Empire, Wars, War. Wars of the Italian Army, uh, or no, no, the Italian Wars Army. Italian Wars, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I never cool. got it. Yeah, all the Lanzik and the, you know, I don't know. The Swiss. The yeah, there's a lot of variety, and they there's some, some I mean, bright colors and. Yeah, and basically it's an empire army. I mean, that's yeah, exactly basically. They, You're right. They base, the, they base the empire off of it. So wait, and so I already didn't had the one. Uh, didn't uh, Games Workshop create all these uh, historical looking models first before they became historically accurate? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. There's no way they would copy uh, historical stuff. They couldn't copy oh, gosh, that, no. right? Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah, I remember back in the day, a friend and I, we were having a, a very terse discussion about he was he was complaining about that very thing that um, that they're just stealing stuff that already exists. And I said, well, it's kind of hard to create something that does outside of the human experience anyway. I mean, you can fanciful a lot of things, but if you're going to have a human doing something. It's yeah, although you do see some some niche companies doing some stuff that's really especially they can do it now because of whether it's 3d printing or uh just the internet in general allows people to find out about them but yeah there's some crazy fantasy faction things going on you know yep i know like the wars of wars of oz um has got some crazy you know they're riding like ostrich like looking things for their <laughs> cavalry and i mean there's all kind kinds of cr crazy cool things kind of like wizard of odd stuff yeah, yeah it's based in the uh frank bombs land of oz only they went after it was supposedly if i got it right so, there was a, like an apocalypse and then this is kind of so there's some weird stuff but it's kind of basically it's kind of a napoleonic type weaponage they've got cannons and and yeah. uh you know muskets and things like that type of type of things and and they well see that's what, that was basically what he was talking about and that's was my base argument we we're always going to fall to what humans have always done i mean it, yeah you can't right do you haven't done <laughs> no it's that's true and, and there's only so much that a human can do <laughs> yeah it's like realistically yeah. yeah, that's true. Try to come up with something original. That's especially nowadays. It's probably been been done. Yep. Either in real life or in a book or a movie or a piece of art or something. Yeah. Well, human imagination. Well, suits, of, suits of armor that do, do everything for us. At some point in time in the future, won't even have to worry about walking. Yeah, I always like read these sci-fi books where they have the uh, AI is running. He's like, "You're in the battle suit. You're just the uh, meat suit." You know, inside. Yeah, um, and the AI you're is there. running everything. It stops working. <laughs> My job is just to hold on. Yeah. Yeah. And then if something does happen, then you got the meat wagon there to take over. Is the backup. Yeah, that's true. I've seen that stuff. Well, we do have some topics if we want to get talking about those. Oh my. Right. Well, let's just jump right in. Let's get throw caution to the wind. And yeah. And say if everything goes wrong tonight, it's all dance full. No, I see I can't I can't take that responsibility because I just made the suggestion. <laughs> not not my show. <laughs> well I can't uh, I can't blame the screenwriter if if the acting's bad. <laughs> It's the direct hey, Josh. There's Josh. How's he doing? How good to see you, buddy. Hey. Yeah, uh, good to see the musty war gamers and hobby action. Actually uh, making oh, progress. I'm old and they go together bad. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Talking about the horses. Talking about Not the horses. us, the horses. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> well, we're old and we go together poorly. So yeah. Yeah. She's not wrong. <laughs> no, no, no. We got Clyde dashing in the house. How goes the war? Well, the war is slowly grinding us down. Yeah, well, we're, well, we're not done yet. We're but not we're, gonna we're, give up. We're hanging in the trenches, well, and we got scotch. So yeah, so we might come out the other side. Hmm. That's good stuff. 
It's that twelfth year that did it. Yeah. <laughs> if it had aged it only eleven, it would have been bad. Oh, you couldn't hardly drink the stuff. Yeah. No, that's right. All right, we got a couple topics tonight. All right, uh, they kind of go hand in hand in a way. Yep. Uh, question is basing. What materials, techniques, multi-basing, or single round versus square, or other shapes where you get your bases, or where you get your bases? 3D printed bases, plastic, MDF, magnetized, you name it. Where do you get your, your goodies? Yeah, where do you get them and how do you decide, you know? Yeah. Because that's, I kind of was thinking about it because I, the other night, I was waiting for some of my buildings to to dry, the super glue, where I could do the next little stage. And and I got dipping into my uh, War Master stash. And I've got I've got a bunch of them that came with the little plastic GW bases, and they're fine. Um, there's goods and bads about them, but here I don't know a year year and a half ago when I thought maybe I would actually kind of get started on them finally, I um, I bought two other choices of bases, and so I was looking at them again last night, trying to decide what the final decision was. And I didn't come up with an answer, but the other choice I went to, um, oh, what are they? Um, the Charlie Foxtrot. Yeah. Cause they had bases that were the right size and they're MDF. Uh, and they were only, I forget if it was two mil or something. And I really liked the look of those. And, and then about that same time I went on to Etsy which is another bad place that you should never go because it's like a rabbit hole. <laughs> that you, you never come out yes, of. Yes, it is. It's so cool. I mean, there's so much stuff, and they're all people just, you know, it's a shop, pri private know. people doing their crafts and, you know, and selling stuff they're making and their ideas. So anyways, but I looked on there, and there was a place that were 3D resin printing, and there were four... I mean, one of the suggestions they used them for was for War Masters. So they were the right dimensions. Um, the only thing different on them is they were a little bit taller. And I can't remember off the top of my head whether they were three mil, something like that, maybe. So they're a little taller. And then the edges are ever so slightly beveled, which I wasn't sure if I liked that. But the thing that was super intriguing was they had um, part of the 3D print had... Uh, a hole or a, you know, a little holder to put a, whatever, I can't remember, a two mil magnet or something, which came with them. Mm -hmm. Cause the whole, so that was my whole quandary I was in uh, a few of the miniatures I'd bought through the years didn't come with bases. So I was going to need something, which you can basically get Renedra makes the bases that are exactly like GW. So that's not a big deal. But then I was thinking for storage and transport, which we talked about two weeks ago. So I could buy little, like Rusty, you showing those little plastic, you know, uh, tackle boxes or little storage yeah. boxes, the Plano boxes and things. And I like those, but like, well, you know, in some cases I'm like, well, they weren't exactly the right size or there's maybe more movement than I'd like. Or what if it, you know, it, I dropped it. It, it, none of the models would break, but they'd all be like banging in there. And I, so then I got thinking about the magnetic idea because I'm like, well, then they could just take them on a, you know, a cookie sheet or whatever and you carry them sideways and the things would stick on there. So is that is that better? Um, and I thought, well, the two mil were taller, two or three mil was taller than the small, really ultra thin one, plastic ones that GW sold, which are made by Renedra. Uh, but those are so thin that you cannot absolutely cannot pick them up by the base. Yeah. Okay. Is that a good, so then you're handling the figures. Is that good or bad? Some of them are, you know, they're a little more delicate when you get down to the 10 millimeter size. And so I thought, well, and so those, uh, it, but I also like them. They, since they are 10 mil figures with the base being super thin like that, it's plenty sturdy, but 
it blends into the table better. Otherwise, these 10 mil figures look like they're standing on a ledge. So then, so round and round I went on that. I had three different materials, three different heights, and and I still can't really decide because it's one of those things, once I pick one, I, I want to commit. And it's like, okay, that's what I'm going to be using. And I'm, I actually have the miniatures to do an undead and surprise, a Bretonian one. <laughs> And so I can miniaturize my Bretonian 28 millimeter force that way. And <clears throat> so that was that, then that got me thinking about bases. And then how do you decide, are you going to multi base or individual base? Cause on my AWI, I went with individual basing, but I'm always drawn to people that either base them in fours or sixes. Yeah. It just on the table looks cool. And then your base is even more of like a diorama look. And the guys don't have to be in exact ranked lines, you know, because I put mine on 20 millimeter bases, magnetize them and put them in a movement tray. And and I, I make them, you know, they're flocked and they, you know, a l- little more sophisticated than they'd have to be. But they still don't have that same look that you have with multi-basing. And, and I always thought, well, at some point I could just, they're plastic bases. I could just glue them together into groups of four and, and then just, you know, re, just add some flock and, or a little filler on the top and then flock them and, and I'd have it. But I did it individually originally so that I could still play like muskets and tomahawks and play games that have figure removal, um, like um, sharp practice. And so... Because I thought, well, I don't want to paint two at AWA armies because that would take me two lifetimes because I'm extremely slow. Um, so I went with this, which is kind of a compromise. And I'm still, you know, basically happy with that decision. But so that kind of opened up that whole, you know. And, but uh, once I start doing it, I want to stick to it. And then you throw in the fact of, you know, GW's 20, 20 millimeter old hammer and then they're new game that's 25 millimeter for infantry what do you do with that and which so just the whole basing thing and then round or square for me it's not so much what looks better uh, what or i guess it is i mean i don't want to get into a big heated debate on that but the for me i like in rank and flank or you know rank and file games i just like how the squares look all scrunched together in a movement tray or however you do it they're the round ones are nice, in my opinion, to, to convert ones that you had on round bases to put them on yeah. Sabbath trays. That's a great answer. But if you're just starting in with the idea to do a rank and flank, I like the – it's just old school for me maybe. I just like the look of them all square, sitting together in a square tray. But like my bolt-action minis – I would never even consider square. So I don't know if it's because it's a skirmish game or that's just because that's how everybody does it or because it's World War II. I don't even know why that doesn't bother me. But but I prefer not to have rank and flank in round in a movement tray. <laughs> you know, I don't I don't know, but so anyway, that just kind of lot a lot going on in all those thoughts, but those are things that keep reoccurring to me over the last three or four years when I'm committing to a project and then trying to decide why I want to go down the certain path. So anybody got comments on that? It sounds like analysis paralysis. Well, no, I, I, once I decide I'm, I'm happy with my decision, but it, I just, there's something there. What yeah. makes you, I mean, obviously, and it gets discussed all the time and even in historicals, it's like anytime a new rule set comes out, everybody in the Facebook groups, everybody's talking about, so, so what's the basing, you know, how, how do they need to be based? Yeah. No matter how, what's the frontage, what's, you know, what's a unit size. And, and so it's all, it's, it's a thing. It's integral to to your game system and there's lots of different solutions and i always find the solution that that i'm happy with but it, it is a thing that is considered and i, I just i hadn't thought we'd really talked about that on, on the show uh, before so i thought i was just curious what what you guys kind of how you look at or how you approach it hmm. well i started off 
like everybody else, basing everything individually because I start off with Warhammer. And when I first started doing my historical, I based everything the same way, 20, 20 millimeter square bases and, and all that kind of stuff. And then the more I got into historicals and I saw all the really cool multi-basing that was going on, then I started doing multi-basing. Um, then I started th thinking about, you know, there's going to come a time when either there's going to be a rules change, just like has happened. There's going to be all these skirmish games that come along. And so then I started doing some 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 of the army in uh like 25 millimeter rounds but in a sabat base so i can have like for hail caesar i can have the frontage of a standard size unit but i can also have them magnetized in a sabat so i can pull them out use them for skirmish if i want and then put them back in and then use them for rank and flank i think right. a multi-use I think multi-use is depending well, it gives on the, you the army. Flexibility, right? That, yes. Yeah, it gives you flexibility. And at some point in time, when I go to sell it, that that ability to take them off and and do them individually, or take them off and re redo them in a size of a unit that they want, may be appealing to whoever purchases whatever that army is. I say that. But I agree with you, Dan. When I'm doing rank and flank, there's something about those square bases, multi-based guys out there. Gosh, yeah. It's just cool. A, it looks good. Yeah. Now, like bolt action, though, with the round bases makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. Same. Because there's a bunch more individual guys running around doing their own thing as opposed to in lockstep with the person next to you right uh, i i started off yeah well, like squares and i i do like the 25 millimeter rounds though and and if you're having like um like long spears and pikes and stuff like that sometimes depending on the manufacturer it's very difficult to get those guys to line up one behind the other mm -hmm. where it doesn't look like they're sticking the guy in front of them in the back of the head. Yes. <laughs> or they, or they especially like if you, if you put them on like, like a slot of base where, you know, everybody, because of the way the bases are, are done, they're like one right behind the other one. Um, that's where I like a little uh, 25 millimeter because you can just shift them a bit. And See, what I, I thought of that. Normally, yep. Well, let me scooch over here out of this cabinet. And oh, I showed like some of these guys last week. These are uh, some conversions I made for Celt Iberians. For Can you my always uh, green up there, Rusty, please. There Thank we go. You. These are the, the I've kind of, uh, they're warlord games and a little bit of Victrix plastic kind of bashed together to make Celt Iberians. Mm -hmm, and okay. because of those dynamic poses, especially a guy like where am I where am I at with my camera? Right here. I know, right? This guy, mm -hmm. no, you get you get multi basing those guys, and it is a nightmare. So mm -hmm. when they're on the round. You can kind of twist them just a little, however you yeah. Want, and they tend to uh, fit better on the twenty-five millimeter rounds, and and yeah. so you can twist them a little bit, and that looks good for like a tribal force. Mm -hmm. It looks it looks pretty accurate for them actually. Um, yeah, yeah. I just I don't know I. I, I like the idea of being able to use the armies in a lot of different ways. And um, to me, the, the, the Sabat tray round bases, if, especially because most rank and flank have like a frontage sort of a thing. Yep. You're, you're trying to get so many wide, so many deep. 
Well, as long as I can meet that criteria, it the other part really doesn't matter that much. Now, if you, oh God, one of my pet peeves from back in the old days when there was a rule back in the old Warhammer where it was like corner to corner, you know, you yeah. know, remember that when you're square, yeah. you corner, to corner. Well, our our ever expanding uh, national identity being of uberly competitive. They took that into being units, corner to corner. What it, it, we just expanded it to the realm of uh, what is that absurdum? Whatever it is, we just took it to ad nauseum. Yeah, ad nauseum. it just it was horrible. So, to me, <laughs> as long as my frontage is right and my depth is right, I'm not going to complain. Whether I don't care how my opponent has his stuff based. You should be yeah, able to I don't work either. it. It's yeah. mathematical. It's like a lot of guys, you know, well, I like 40s. Well, I like 50s. Okay, mm -hmm. you have five, I have four, but we have the same frontage. Mm -hmm. It's too hard. I mean, it doesn't, doesn't matter. You know, you, right. you figure it out. And I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's do what makes you, makes you happy and what fits the games you play. Now, me, yeah. I like making sure I've got a little bit of variety in mind where I can pull them off and use them. Because I, I like the idea of skirmish stuff as long as it's related or connected to the larger battle that's to come. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, it's part of the storyline. It's Right. Uh, I'm not a big fan of playing skirmish games as one-offs. I like them being part of a larger storyline. They okay. make sense. They make sense to me that way. And I just, I like them. But just to yeah. play one up with like 12 guys on the table, I say that, and then I must eat my own crow that I have cooked because I liked, um, oh, what was, oh, God, now I'm drawing a blank. Help. Socket? Uh, or... It was the one from Games Workshop. Uh, the skirmish game. Had oh, like, more time? No, more time. five. Oh. It, was a 40, it was kind of 40K. Come on. It's, help me um, out here. Like Age of Sigmar? No, that. No, no, no. What the, with the bigger figures, that one? The... No, 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 no. No, it was like, oh, God. Now, now I wish I had the book in front of me. Um, Somebody in the... Somebody help me out because I, I know what I'm. I I can see it as plain as day. We played it, and I really it had two editions. The first edition was pretty straightforward. Oh, Inquisitor. And, no, that's the one that's no. bigger figures. That's the one I was thinking of. Ne Necromunda. The, no, Chris. Forty K. No, Forty K. Come on, Kill skirmish team. game. Kill team. That's okay, Chris. Okay. okay, Josh got it. Kill Point one point to Josh. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank I've never you. played it. So I don't know what it is. I I love the first version. Okay. You had five to eh, roughly ten models. Then you had you had orcs and gobbies, goblins. You could have a lot more, but. Mm -hmm. uh, and I played that skirmish game, and I enjoyed it. And I okay. played. We played them one off. They didn't. Although there was a, like a campaign system for it. Uh, I enjoyed that, but in my historical stuff, I do like like to have them being part of a, a larger story. So that's why I okay. do my basing that way, mm -hmm. so I have the potential to do that. But uh, fair enough. I, I I agree with you, Dan. Those big squares, those big blocks, you oh, know, those are cool. They, they they do look good. They do look good, but. Uh, a lot of my army are based that way, and then I have a lot of units that are based with the Sabbat. Matter of fact, yeah. I have a I got a 40 man Sabbat base in there that I got to fill up full of Celts and stuff at some okay. point. Just yeah, it just I'm, gives you more flexibility. That's I mean, that's where I was at, and I'm I'm happy with that decision. But I go on to Facebook groups, and people are posting. 
you know, so they just finished a unit and it's like, oh man, that looks really sweet like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'd say I always like having the capability of if I've oh, got, yeah, if they're on a square base or staying on a square. Uh, that was a big thing when that Age of Sigmar came around. That oh, you, know, you if you changed all the round bases and put everything on round bases, you can play Age of Sigmar. Yeah, I thought that was odd. How they did yeah, because I I went over and was playing. Uh, it started playing Age of Sigmar over at the Warhammer store, and I was at everything was on square bases, and they were like, "Well, you need to change those to rounds." I was like, "I'm not rebasing anything." Well, then there's people now they're rebasing their stuff that they rebased. Yeah. To back to the old world. <laughs> uh, like, welcome drive, back to the party. That would drive just, me insane. I would ne I've never rebased anything, nor do I ever see doing that ever. ever. Well, that's where now that the, the old world has showed up and they say, like, everything has to be on 25 mil bases. And I'm like, I'm not pulling my stuff off 20 mil bases. Yeah. They're on that base. I will just make movement trays. Oh, 100%. And yeah. Put them, on, put them on the movement trays. It's a no-brainer. Well, and actually, Rusty, the first time, I don't, you know, I figured when you and I play, we could even just do it, don't even need the movement trays, because I'm a little hesitant to figure out what move, yeah. I don't want a whole bunch of movement trays that I'm not going to use. It's like, well, yeah, you don't run them in that formation. They need to be longer and narrower, you know. And yeah. Yeah. So I don't want well, yeah, if we're playing each other use, and both our of our armies are based mil. on the old style, why even bother? The only thing that would have any effect that I can think of, and I, I don't know if I really thought it out, but if you're ever using any kind of a template type effect, it would affect more, a lot more models. You know what I mean? Well, the the templates haven't changed size, so yeah, but but, you're, but it. I figured they're, the rules are written as if they were basically more Big. spread out yeah. and we're crunching them in so you'd have a bigger effect on the unit than you would. That's It'd be both ways. It just kind of, yeah. I don't know. It wouldn't throw a game off, but that's no. the only effect I can see. Yeah, you know that, what I mean? That's true. But if everybody's using the same style of stuff, well, it's not going to matter. Yeah, probably not. Just be like some lucky hit, you know. But yeah. So a couple – more models died or something probably doesn't matter besides yeah. that it's like it's not a tournament i mean we'd just be having a great well, time anyway you know when we were, we were playing a uh our land of the free we put everything yep. on movement trays yep we made our own movement trays to actually for specifically for that games <laughs> yeah so it's like we came to a, a uh, agreement what size they should be and just went with it. So and just went with it. Yeah. Cause you can have, yeah, you can, what you call a regular size unit or a large size unit can be whatever you decide, long as you're both doing it the same, you know? Yeah. Good point. Now we have some comments in here. Let's get through these. All right. Yeah. Chris, normally I like square for ranks and round for skirmish. That is true. That's it's kind like, of true for me. Yeah. Uh, uh, you can play skirmish games easily with square bases. It doesn't matter. It's just a representation. That's all. Mm -hmm. So if someone has square bases and they want to play it, it's like, I don't care. It's, it doesn't change the fact of really much of anything. Yeah. I just, it just comes down to personal, you know, opinion and why you choose to do it. Yeah. That was the interesting part. You know, it's like I have a bunch of War Machine Hordes models here, and they all, everything there is on round bases. That mm -hmm. came from, this, you know, that's how they were designed that way. And, like, bolt action, everything is on round bases. Uh, go back to um, other games that, you know, going way back for World War to historical games, and almost everything was rounds. Mm -hmm. It's pretty standard back then. That's always, yeah. Yeah. It's all about the base. <laughs> about the base. All about that base. That yeah. base. Oh, my God. No treble. <laughs> this is the way. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. My new project has me using four inch and three inch round diorama style for twenty eight planes wars. Oh, that okay. would be cool. Yeah. 
So basically, you're just making several, like four or five models or six models, whatever, on that four-inch base then? Or... Yeah, on a four-inch round, you wouldn't think there'd be more than... Well, it depends. Yeah. Yeah, see what he says. Uh, cavalry, four-inch, and infantry are three-inch rounds. Okay. Hmm, interesting. So a three-inch round... Is that diameter? Three inch diameter. Yeah. You get what? Four models on that? Three models? Well, unless you're trying to have more, kind of a horde situation. I don't know. Yeah. Cavalry wouldn't, obviously. Yeah. I just think of the uh... three cav and three on infantry. Okay. I jumped ahead. Okay. Well, yeah, square, square based, based old hammer. Oh, yeah. everything. It's like if you got sword board, uh, rank and file, everything should be square. If you're bunching those suckers up, they got to be on a square base. And it's funny for me when I look at the, you know, and again, I'm not, if anybody likes it the other way, that's totally fair. But just to me visually, I, I don't like, because people are like, oh, look how much better that those infantry look on the 25 mil than the 20 mil base. And I will say in some of the cases where they're really, they were just too big to be on a 20 millimeter base. It's, it's probably fine. Cause you almost couldn't rank some of them up, but like my Bretonians, they spread those fifth edition Bretonian spearmen out. It looks like they're like a, in a picket formation or something. Yeah. I mean, they're like they're not, I like them shoulder to shoulder like they, you know, and I like them bunched up on square bases on 20 mils, but. Well, the uh, chaos and orcs were always on 20 They just were a nightmare, and I've seen, they're not wrong there. Yeah, they're just big models that need to be on a bigger base. Even the old models, well, at least like 6th edition, they were they were tough to rank up then already. Yeah, and even my uh, old uh, demon armies, you know. Mm-hmm. It just makes sense to have them on a larger base. Yeah. As long as they don't look spread out, that's that's whatever yeah, whatever yeah. looks right. I love round bases. Yes. I I'll rebase my minis after I die. Fantasy will always be square based. Well and the same thing goes too for uh like Napoleonics. Uh be it fifteen or twenty eight mils, like Napoleonics look just as good in square bases, ranked up. Mm -hmm. It gives that uh, kind of uh, majestic look as they're all, if you've got, even a, if you ever seen a full table of 28 lined up in Napoleonics, it looks great. It's the same thing, it looks similar to when we had our AWI game going. Yeah. Yeah. We got blocks of infantry moving around, and that's oh, how they moved. Yeah. Yeah. It just builds it in. Yeah, I agree. This is where he's trying to think of Tim's game. He was trying to think of. So yeah. About, there's three or four guesses here. Necromunda. Yeah. Kill team. Uh -huh. Nailed it. Yeah. I have to say, I think I played kill team a couple times. Back that first in the day. I, really, I guess they when they came out with the second one, I don't know. They, they didn't even call it. What did they call it? it was, they didn't even call it Kill Team. I forget what they called it, but it had all these tokens and yeah, it just had all this extra stuff. And Well, they tried to make it more elaborate. Yeah. and I think you can overkill <laughs> uh, with the uh, token. Uh, overkill Kill Team. <laughs> overkill, overkill Kill Team. Yeah. Yeah. And then Inquisitor was large. Yeah, they were like 54 millimeter or something. Yeah. yeah. That was something that just did it was here and gone. It was a flash and pan. I do, it's like, what? Yeah, it didn't last long. The, the, I, it was in the 2000s when that came out because I had my White Dwarf subscription during that yeah. time frame. And I don't think I ever seen it even being played ever. Because I don't yeah. think it even, people I never even bought much. anything into it. Josh wants to know what he won for guessing, right? Appreciation in life. 
it's just the respect of being the games workshop guru of past uh, GW history. <laughs> the heavy, the heavy metal guy. Yeah, the heavy metal guy. Oh, we got new and that's uh, oh, GM, GM Cody. Cody's in. Even. Oh, I watched uh, a video, a YouTube video. He was oh, was he was he talking with Josh? I, yeah, it was an interview, and they were they also went through a. Uh, an old white dwarf issue, I believe. Yeah. I, and so I just subscribed to his channel <laughs> uh, this week. First okay. I'd, anyway, that's a good channel if you're into, well, if you're into a lot of old. Uh, the old vintage. stuff. Yeah. And well, a lot we're of kind of old ourselves. So. Yeah. So it's right. We're, up, we're vintage. It was right up my alley. And vintage. I just, just found out about him. So check him out. And this is the three cav, three infantry on a base. Okay. Yep. Yeah, it makes sense that a four inch base, you, you can only get three cav on there. They're pretty big models. That's pretty cool. I bet you can make some neat bases that way, though. No, you make little dioramas. Well, it's yeah. like that uh, commander base I used for my um, yep. overall commander for AWI, where it was, I think, a three inch style base. I think it was. Is that the one you had the table with the map on it or something? Yeah. I made a little yeah, diorama. Right? I remember that. That was nice. He's sitting there with his like, hey, looking over the yeah. pondering the maps. Which one is this we're standing on here? This is pretty yeah, it was well done. Is this good ground? This is yeah. good ground. Best ground I've seen all day. <laughs> Gettysburg. <laughs> yes. I base it on what comes in bags. <laughs> one bag per base. <laughs> or whatever it divides out to be uh, done that. Third edition basing was small 20. Oh, yes. Or I didn't hexa... know this. Yes, you got uh, uh, hexagonal bases and you got 20 mil rounds. Yes. And you would buy... I remember a lot of the Marauder stuff coming in and it was on hexagonal bases. So they yeah, I never, I didn't know anything about Warhammer Fantasy till fourth edition. I remember seeing the box set in a hobby yeah. shop, but I didn't even know what the game was back in the day. Yeah, yeah, that was when I first started playing uh, third edition. We used to play over at the Alliance uh, Miniatures, and it was a lot of different stuff it was it was a hodgepodge of things mm -hmm. and we played a lot of we were using a lot of Ralph partha stuff at the time because you couldn't really get citadel or marauder stuff or well, yeah Ralph partha was everywhere and yeah. in u.s base it was easy to get i mean i mail ordered stuff from them um yeah brigade has cav in bags of three in infantry and six in a bag I have hmm. been putting dead horses on bases of infantry. Oh yeah, Brigade Games. That's where I got my uh, my latest AWI medals, and that's how they come: three, three cav, or six infantry. Yeah, okay. they do it that way too. Good models. They're sculpted by well, that, uh, Paul. That, um, what's that's the same way with uh, Perry. You get in the threes and sixes. Is it okay? I didn't know. Yeah. <clears throat> I got a whole, well, I don't know if you can, well, you can probably see a pile of white back here. Right uh, oh, there. Oh, I see it. Yeah. That pile of white, that's my 28th. They've been primed in white. Yeah, I don't make they have, No, they got white pants. So, oh, yeah. Might as well cut down half the battle. There you go. It's like saving myself some time. It's already done. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Put check. a little bit of wash effects on the cracks and stuff, the legs, and hey, you're good to go. You're off and running. Yep. yep. They have so many caves like that. They never seen uh, last more than, yeah, was, that's, yeah, with Games Workshop. It's what the hell, like, the, the boutique games, as they call them. And hopefully, yeah, uh, Old World isn't boutique games. Anybody remember when they brought back um, 
what was the ship game they had? Uh, I used to play it. Oh. Uh, Man of War. Yeah. Man of War, Man yeah. War. I'd I love big, that. Game I had some awesome. Man of War. I had the, uh, what the hell were the Reaver guys? Um, well, they had Dark Elves. I'm surprised you didn't have that. Yeah. Chaos Dwarves. I had a, several fleets we played for a while, and then nobody's played it again. I just sold them off on eBay. Fun other stuff. Yeah. But yeah, that is, they when they brought back uh, uh, Man of War, they brought it back as a boutique game, and they brought it, instead of the small scale, you know, they brought it as the biggest, bigger scale. Well, they, did they did Dreadfleet, remember that? When that yeah. Was, was supposed to be the rebirth, kind of. Everybody thought it would be like Man of War coming back, and it really wasn't. No, it was a disaster. <laughs> yeah. Well, there, yeah, there's stories of them throwing... Throwing the games out, uh, brand new games. I don't, I, I don't know if that's true, but you hear it repeated. Yeah, went to the garbage heap. No one yeah. would buy it. Were the models muscle. are amazing. Yeah, no, they were. If they were just made them in the old scale and, and actually turned it into uh, you know man of war game again, that would be great. Yeah, it sounded like and the game trying. wasn't the worst. It was just people thought it was way too random. Yeah. Because I watched some playthroughs uh, a year or so ago. Oh, what was... Uh, well, now we have the newest... Um, where they're trying to bring back uh, Space Marine. Yeah. You know, the uh, epic scale stuff. And it's now, instead of 6 mil, it's 10 mil. Yeah, that seemed like an odd idea. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not smart enough to figure out why that's a good idea. My man, GM Cody, is in the house. <laughs> I got seven pounds of Planes War from Brigade Miniatures. That's a lot of miniatures. Yeah, it doesn't take long, though, you know, to get... <laughs> yeah, let's see. Pounds Where's... add up. Yeah, Paul Hicks sculpted the Brigade Games minis I've got. He also did uh, a bunch of the... Um, Baron's War stuff, which I know Josh is involved with. Yeah, you can see behind this pole right there is a big brown box that is full of 15 mil uh, uh, elves. Okay. <laughs> I was ready to get started making painting them up and just lost steam. Well, they'll be waiting for you. Yeah, I'll get around to them again some decade. Well, you get through <laughs> a lot of stuff, so I got yeah, if I, get a, if I get into a kick or something, I'll burn through it. I'm hoping to use my new airbrush on minis. Oh, man. Yeah, airbrush. I always find airbrushes work good for larger scale models. People prime them with uh, airbrush, I think, would work yeah. well. Yeah, when the weather's really bad, I, I like priming with my airbrush. And... Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't own an airbrush. <laughs> I used to have one, and the, the compressor bit the dust. That's really the yeah. most expensive part of it. Yeah, I dropped and broke mine. I have one of those small little uh, Iwata Eclipse. Got the oh, little yeah. Little square. Yeah, I pulled it right off the, the, and smashed the it cabinet there. I had it sitting on, and Oh, and it, it just stopped working all together after that. I can't it imagine that why. Do it. Can't imagine yeah. why. So I had to get another impression. Because I, I command just spray in the house. <laughs> Remind me that the Muscle War Gamers were live. Always missed them live. Good catch. I plan on jumping into Man of War this year with all the great 3D prints. Yeah, I was looking at oh, 3D prints. No, stuff. he's not wrong. I've looked at a Bretonian. You can they're amazing and they're very affordable. Well, the thing is, is actually getting the rules. That's the hard part. Well, you can get them. Go to the Man of War Ooh. Facebook group. All this everything you need is there. The rules, oh, really? the templates, everything in the file section. Yep. Oh, 100%. I did not know that. Everything you okay. need. 
So yeah, wow. it'd be affordable to get into it. And it's not, not that many models to paint up or buy to rock and roll. Yeah. That's yeah, the same way what used to be is uh, playing uh, um, Uncharted Seas. It didn't cost oh, you much yeah. to get into it. Mm -hmm. And you can still find models on the eBay. Mm -hmm. Great to see that, uh, Jim, you were here. We've got a new subscriber with Dan the Man. Yeah, yeah, I was impressed. He's that uh, he's done a lot of stuff in his life. He had, uh, a lot of role playing stuff, band stuff. He that guy's he's had some adventures. Uh, yeah, it was fun listening to him and Josh chat on their program. And Chris said, "Red Fleet was terrible. I tossed twelve boxes <laughs> back on the store." Well, there's oh. a good example. Oh, that, that's a little painful, though. Well, yeah. I don't know. The game didn't look... I don't know. It was... I watched some playthroughs, and, and you got to... It's... I don't know. It just, to me, it looked like very beer and pretzel. You got to not take it too seriously. A lot yeah. of it's out of your control, and I know a lot of people don't like that. It's sort of like Talisman. You're along for the ride. You're not driving. <laughs> but... Yeah, there might have been more to it than that, but the playthroughs I saw didn't look like a train wreck, but I can see why nobody, you know, why it didn't sell well. Yeah. The scale was wrong anyway. That didn't help them. Uh, so many brigade men and he's such nice stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Good service too. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I've ever ordered anything from him. Well, I did their Kickstarter, uh, AWI Kickstarter, last, was it a year ago or something? Yeah. And, you know, it's always fun to support those smaller companies. And Paul Hicks had done the sculpts, and, and it was stuff that fit right into things that I needed. Um, I got some cavalry and, and some regular troops, but the Kickstarter was for the cavalry, so. but I added a few things to my order. Were those colonials were those... Uh... There were militias, the ones I got. I got okay. the mounted militia. All did They're the planes war. Okay. Super nice. Okay, yeah. All the planes war. That'd be cool, too. What rule set uh, uh, are you looking at, Chris? You having some serious thought there, Tim? <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of. Hmm. That was a big old hmm. having, a, having a moment. Hmm. That's like you're reevaluating a major decision with that hmm. <laughs> no, I'm still kicking around what big projects coming next, and I, I got that one, you know, battle in a box thing, the pit from the Perry's, the American Civil yep. War thing. I've got that. Remember you said that, yeah. But I'm still not sure what direction to go. What? Yeah, because I was like having a big project. I know. And I like following your projects because they're massive, and you get them done. <laughs> you know, you yeah, I, you stick with it, and you get it. You get it done. You're a plugger. Yeah, it's in, it's yeah, uh, I, inspirational. I like to think of it as uh, I'm I'm good at the grind. Yeah, I'm you don't lose. Grind. You don't I, lose sight of the end game. Nope. It is. Uh, I, appreciate I don't know. That. I just I just get such a sense of satisfaction when I get to that point of basically that point of burnout. But then you can put it all out and go, "That's why." <laughs> yeah. When I'm doing like, that's, what, yeah. Just doing a unit here or there. It never feels like I'm getting anything done yeah I'm, I'm not really getting to a point of completion yeah and, but when you get them done and you get it all lined up on the table then it's like okay oh yeah now oh, that's yeah, i look like i did that video or showed those pictures where i had it all out <laughs> on the ta six by four table and it took up almost the whole six foot six foot by four foot table so yeah it's yeah uh, 
that's, yeah, I like uh, to try to stick with stuff like that. That's that's good stuff, Tim. Yeah, yeah, I, I I like doing that. You know, it just. But I don't know. i I'm kind of. I've done my ancients. Um. Hey, you said you're looking at some black powder thing, maybe you know, type of. Well, yeah, uh, I, I, like or... a English Civil War. I've okay. Got, I got a collection of that, so I'm thinking of moving up in time periods, but I'm just not sure which time. Uh, yeah, the Seven Years' War, maybe jump all the way up to the uh, American Civil War, a little ACW. Mm-hmm. Are but you, you know? The world is a is a vast place, and there's all kinds of conflict. And I can, I can. The one thing I like about the Seven Years' War is like it's the first real world war where the fight was going on all over. So you could have some really eclectic looking armies, yeah, especially in, in <laughs> India, especially. Yeah. Uh, so and that's Clark it. Says- it would be grand if I tackled Brigade Seven Years War stuff. Oh, yeah. That'd be cool. That would be interesting. Do you ever think of doing a smaller scale, Tim? Yes. That's that also look? part of that. Yeah, that's, that's also part of it. I'm thinking of whatever I do, whatever big project I do, will be... 15 millimeter or smaller. Yeah. yeah. I've matter of fact, I've got from Bacchus, I've got I got uh six mil stuff. Huh? I got six mil um uh, oh what was it? War of the Roses stuff. Just, yeah. just on a whim, I bought that stuff. It's a, a knee-jerk reaction, an impulse buy. We don't have to invest much, you know, so it's it's tempting to look at the and small It wouldn't take kit. very long to uh, paint up that uh, back of stuff because it's not a lot of detail to it. No, it no. can't be. No. It's like when I pat the last six mil stuff was, you know, with uh, Battletech Infantry, and I painted a whole bunch of it up in just a day. Yeah. Because there's no really detail to it. You don't have any of your uh, ACW 15 mil old didn't you used to have huge armies of that rusty or am i wrong yeah i had uh the table behind me that you played on i could yeah. fill that complete table up with all my napoleonics and okay uh, napoleonics yeah it my napoleonics would fill that up and i had a whole bunch of acw okay and i sold it and well you've seen what it became so yes well i'm definitely doing ACW and 15. Yeah. That's the only yeah. way I'll, I'll be able to do that. And I think that'll, that'll look and play better for the way I want it to be. Well, and I, you know what I was saying is because I played mainly on, I can go bigger on my table, but normally it's six by four. Because mm-hmm. it fits in the space. And so I was thinking, so I can play bigger games on a, on the same size table. Right. Smaller. That's my thought. Yes. Yeah. And you I can mean, get. I, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It just um, fifteen. I think, it, smaller scales have intrigued me for a while. Me, it didn't used to for me, but the last I would say two to three years, it's been super tempting for that kind of thing. And then, of mm-hmm. course, I've had the. I actually bought some of the Warmaster minis back when that game came out. Cause I'm like, that was back when I was, had no spending money and I just got married. Well, actually I hadn't just gotten married, but I just had my first, let's see my second child. 97. And yeah. 98 was when she was born and war master came out in 2000. And so like all the hobby stuff just went away and, uh, the farm stuff was not panning out the best at that time either. So I, but I thought, Oh, that's something I could do. Cause you know, when I wouldn't have to spend near so much, I thought the games workshop minis were too expensive back then for what I could afford. And I thought, well, on the small scale like that, I could, it's like still playing it and the rules looked cool. And so I did, I bought the book and I bought 
a couple packs of Bretonians at one of the hobby shops down in Omaha when I was down there, but I never, never painted them. Um, but anyway, I guess what I was just going to say was the, the whole 10 mil thing there is super intriguing as well. And the, when you watch battle reports of it, it just looks, uh, it's just, it's a whole different kind of a game, you know, where you got the sweeping maneuvers and your yeah. cavalry yeah. come flanking, you know, it's, it's, you get a grander scale that I don't, unless you had a table that was 15 foot long by eight foot deep or something on 28 mil, you just aren't going to get that same feel. Yeah. And that's what I've been noticing. I like, like I, when we would game at this buddy of mine's house, he's got one that's, it's six feet wide and it's 12 or 15 feet long in his basement. So we play yeah. really good sized games. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At my house, I don't have that. And I've, I've noticed that it, with my 28 millimeter historicals that space is of a premium. And so yeah. what I've, I've changed my thought process and how I, put the armies on the table what i think would look right on the table so that's why i'm thinking go smaller get that sort of mm -hmm. ability to oh, yeah. have sweeping maneuvers and stuff yeah yeah because with a uh, slightly smaller table you can play a smaller scale and still play a large battle yes, yes. you don't need as much yeah. space yeah and that's one thing. It's like I got into most of the games I ever played were all small scale. It wasn't until recently that I started getting into when I started playing um, 40K and Warhammer Fantasy that I actually started playing larger models. Mm -hmm. Okay. Of course, back in the day, everything was 25 mil. Uh, even, you know, there wasn't the 28s anyway. Yeah. So that was about the biggest you could get, and they were pretty pretty spindly by today's standards. They weren't heroic 25s, yeah, yeah. even. Heroic scale stuff that we have today. Yeah, you look at my uh, Crazy. Empire Army, which is mostly Ralph Partha, and you hold it up against the standard uh, Games Workshop Empire Army, and it looks kind of small. You look like kids, yeah. But that's what we had to play with at the time. Well, and that's what it was. You didn't, it wasn't weird. <laughs> yeah. Okay. My goal this year is more uh, master combined with uh, Man of War for uh -huh. an epic. <laughs> there you go. Uh, that's cool. Epic map campaign. That would be interesting. I've done something similar in BattleTech before. Where we played, uh, you know, a lot of the games on the map, and then when we actually meet up, then we play the on the tabletop. That'd be an interesting thing to do. Yeah, I think that'd be cool. I think we keep them kept the mats. Oh, from the uh, the game. Oh uh, yeah, because the ocean maps for that yeah. Dread Fleet was they were gorgeous looking cloth maps. Yeah. That was beautiful, and I thought the models were cool looking. They were just like you said, they're not scaled with anything else. Yeah, uh, the rules were you know. Depending what's, on sketch ball. What size bit. were those maps? Oh, I don't remember. Weren't they weren't they like four by six? They, might have been. they weren't that big. Maybe they weren't that big. I remember looking at them thinking that'd be a good ocean map, you know, if I ever did like Man of War or something. Yeah, because it was not Man of War with my customer. Nobody wanted it. Cause we expect when they we heard that it was the problem. Out. They expected it to be a, like a new Man of War, and, and we're like, it really well, this wasn't. is not Man of War. Why would I want to play this? I'm I, yeah, and then it wasn't a powerfully good design, so yeah. it just couldn't stand. It had no legs. Yeah. Oh. Uh, still only halfway through my AWI brigade Kickstarter stuff. If you got a lot of stuff, it's probably going to take you a while. Right? Yeah. Well, he's, he's further than me. <laughs> so well done, Clyde. <laughs> the epic black powder box set. You're talking about the stuff you have, right? Tim? Yeah, you got uh, the no, I, I had the uh, battle in a box. It's 
28. The Perry's Battle in the Box, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which you'll be able to sell that if you if you chose not to go down that path, you know. <clears throat> well, see, well, I I I ordered the wrong thing. I don't know oh, why. You told. That's right. Yeah, and I went to I went to send it back, and then I had to pay shipping to send it back, and it's like, eh, not that not much that big stuff. Of a deal. <clears throat> uh, who knows? I might just paint it, then sell it, or I don't know. Might yeah, lots of it. options. It's it's a de desirable set. So I mean, whether you painted yeah, it or didn't like paint it, said, it's, it's not that big of a project. So, but what I'm thinking of when I'm thinking the the next big project it needs to be something I'm yeah, really yeah. going to sink my 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 teeth into. And with the Seven Years' War thing, a lot of naval conflict as well. So you can talk about ships. Oh yeah. Um. Uh, I like a good ship game. I've never played a naval game. Uh, uh, miniatures. I yeah. played Hex Encounter naval games, yeah. There was a time, well, we talked about it, I think it was last year. I used to have, you remember GHQ? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And I had... A representation of every ship in the American and the Japanese fleet. Oh my God! Oh my. For the Pacific campaign. Woo. That's quite the th that's quite the feat. It wasn't that hard though, because you know they weren't that expensive. Yeah, what scale? Uh, it's uh twenty four hundred scale. Okay. And the thing is, you buy a, a pack. You know, it cost you maybe six bucks at the time. Yeah, and you would get three destroyers, or you know, it was the battleships that were a little more expensive, and they come one per uh, blister. But mm -hmm. our local uh, uh, Regal Miniatures here in, in uh, Urbandale, they carried the line, so you could just buy what you wanted. Oh, cool! Let me tell you, I re I got heavily invested. I was like, oh, okay. I was like, oh, I need this ship. I need this ship. I need this ship. Oh, I need three, a bunch of those. Because you look at every uh, ship in the line, because there may be, uh, it's like, the let's say the Iowa Clash. You know, you had the four yeah. in it. So you, yep. know, it's like, you have to represent each one of them. Uh, oh, heck yeah. You can't just do one. <laughs> and then some battleships, you only had maybe one or two ships in it. So it wasn't that mm -hmm. hard to do. And then destroyers were like, oh, geez, I, you just crank those suckers out real quick. Yeah, not much to them at that scale. And I didn't put much painting into them. You paint them great, you know, like the typical ship color. And then you might have a wood deck or something on them. Yeah, a little dry brush and bam. Good to go. Good to go. That's why if you ever look at my... Uh, Dystopian Wars miniatures, why they, the ships look so nice. <laughs> I had a lot of experience. Yeah, yeah they do look they do look good. My buddy just painted that up. We are going to play some Long Street with it. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, you hear that set mentioned once in a while. Yeah. Did, did Clyde ever mention or no, it wasn't Clyde, it was Chris. Uh, he was gonna play the planes. I was wondering what rule set he's using for the planes. Indians. Oh, planes war. Planes war. Still painting so much ACW. Yeah, yeah that's it's like you get heavily invested into a, an era, or you, know, you can really start going hog wild on it. Well, I found the more it gains momentum for me. You know, at first you're kind of excited to start the project, and then, <clears throat> and then you're kind of getting your smooth and you're seeing the output you're getting and it's starting to like tim said you start setting it on the table even the stalingrad turn train i've got set up on a just a folding table in the other room and i'm seeing it come together and it just kind of spurs me on to keep going and i want to see it i want to see it through and this you know yeah. it kind of builds moment some people get burned out but i you know and i'm getting a little bit but the enthusiasm's still high because i see my progress and i can see if I just painted a building here and there, I mean, three years from now, I still wouldn't have enough to fill half of a table because you wouldn't, you wouldn't, 
you know, you don't get in that groove and, and seeing it grow so quickly that you're, it, it, it keeps me moving. And that's the same for when I paint in the miniatures too. I kind of get on a project and I, I get it to at least a playable force. I may come, can, you know, come back and add more to it, but I like to have it what I considered done to a base level as far as, you know, unit types and stuff so that I could play them before I move on to something else. Yeah. I just think of uh, when I was doing up the Napoleonics in 15, you start going down the, the rabbit hole. It's like, okay, I, you look at a battle and you look at every single unit that was in, and you'd have, could have, I don't know how many, like five, six, seven, eight different units and mm -hmm. they're all painted different. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, okay. And which I came to the quandary of like when I started doing the uh, AWI stuff, I was like, do I paint these guys to be unit specific mm -hmm. in 28 mil and drive myself crazy? Or did I just go a generalization? And I decided to go generalized. And instead of going down that rabbit hole. Yeah, I went with specific units, but not specific units to... I'm not trying to recreate a certain battle. Some people like to do yeah. that. I'd, yeah. I'm not doing that. I'm just like, okay, what units had like, or like the British I'm doing now, who who had blue facings? Okay. Yes. Uh, or even like the Continentals. Well, I need somebody with some brown coats, you know, kind of, or brown was, you know, and I know they were all mismatched and stuff, but, and then, well, I need some with some, you know, blue coats or green coats. Who, who had that to give me... I'm just going for a variety of look, but I am trying to base them on a certain unit. Just, and just give me some direction. Is the some reason. units they they could change like three, oh. four times in the course of the war. Oh, absolutely! Is... It's a it's a total can of worms, and so you still just have to settle. I'm like, well, and I'm making mine a lot more uniform than they would have been. They would have probably been more mismatched, and but I like the look of that. Um, so, but yeah, it, otherwise I think I'd have analysis paralysis. It's like, well, how am I going to paint these? I just find a picture in a somewhat reliable source book and I mean, say, go from there. yep, I like the look of that. That's what they are. And find a flag that matches and the way I go. Yeah. It's like when I did my, uh, uh, Hessians, I was like, okay, oh, which no. Hessian unit do I go yeah. with? It's like, they, they were there or, throughout the war, but which campaign? You know, it's like, yeah. I was like, I just kind of like take a little bit of from, it's like, oh, they got this and they got a little bit of that. And I just kind of like, well, kind of mishmash them together. And, and, and knowing like, that we don't actually know, it's all, it's a yeah. lot of research speculation. I mean, it's not just some random person guessing, but we don't actually know what it looked like. Uh, you know, exactly. So you can't lose too much sleep over that. But there are button counters for the AWI too, because I've been called out. Oh my god! Yeah, the, <laughs> the grognards will show up, and wow, you do know that the buttons on this uh, uniform were brass and not, you know. Like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. I got a severe case. I don't care. <laughs> I know. Nor did I say these are authentic representations of a specific unit on a specific day. No, didn't do that. I did not take pictures of go back in my time machine, take pictures of it and actually make exact replicas. No, I did not go that route. Why not? You're just not dedicated. <laughs> I have time for other things. <laughs> and your time you. machine is currently broken down, so I can't yes. go back. After I get it fixed, I'll go back and check. Yes. As Chris said, I'm still painting so much ACW. Yeah. I could see that. Yeah, that's a good time period. Love some ACW and Seven Years War. And that's two different eras. You know, it's like the nice thing, though, about ACW is that things could be pretty generalized. Unless yeah. you're running certain units, like you, know, you could have the Zoavs or you could have the uh, Iron Brigade. You know, they're going to have slightly different looks. Well, in the Zoo, early war, later war, you know, did they, back yeah. when they were in that, you know, in their stereotypical uniform that everybody likes to put them in. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then but, you always, later in the war, you have the the Rebs were always running a ragtag look, you know, because you know, 
getting what they can get. Running a little low on, yeah. You know, it's like you, I painted a bunch of those uh, 28 mil uh, rebs for uh, John, and it's like, okay, I'm going to look at the, some of them. They got the blue stripe. Some mm -hmm. did not. And then just have the stripe down the legs. And it's like, I'm just kind of mishmashing. I even put some uh, regular uh, union pants on some of them. Oh, yeah, because that, that was legit anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I, I just mishmashed it because it captured uh, uniforms. They're going to use a uniform. They don't care. Mm -hmm. I don't want my uh, um, parts hanging out. So I'm going to grab yeah, myself yeah. a new pair. Of... One of the things I didn't like about the Epic uh, miniatures by Warlord this was that, you know, it's the same sculpt oh, for it's... Confederates and yeah. Union. Yeah. And, I think they make better Confederates, than, you know, I, and I, I'm not an expert at all. I mean, I don't know that much about their uniforms, but I always picture the Union being in largely Kepis, right? You know, and yeah. not, other than like the Iron Brigade and some of them that supposedly had, you know, whatever that other style <laughs> hat is, I forget. But, um, you know, it, it, it to me, it doesn't. And some people go have gone to the effort to cut cut them down so they all look like Kepis. Well, I don't know. That's it's a lot of work, but so that that always kind of bothered me. It's otherwise that was appealing. Other than it's not a scale; it's its own scale. I didn't that bothered yep. me too. But anyway, I don't know. Side shoot there. Sorry. I have some ACW and three scales. That's how much I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what? You must I have 20, that, 15, three different scales, ten. same time period. Ten, or, or do you six. have? It's like uh, you got them in back yeah. is threes or sixes, maybe. Yeah, he said yeah. something about three millimeters, oh, something. Right. And I thought, well, yeah, I, well, you can paint up a lot of three millimeter in no, yeah. I was watching a video a guy post the other day. It was two millimeter. Uh, it's like grains of rice stacked yeah. up. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what it was. The time period, it doesn't matter, but it was, I mean, it looked cool. It wasn't wrong, but yeah, it's a different, different. The three mil stuff is so cheap and easy to paint. Yeah, there's no much uh, detail. You just can crank them out, and they're all in one base. You just hold the base. And... I could drop an entire unit on the floor and never find it, though. <laughs> 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 so somewhere around here I do have some uh, uh, World War II infantry so far in my life I've painted nothing smaller than one 15 millimeter ACW troop that I just wanted to paint last summer to see if I thought it was something I'd enjoy and I did there you go Oh my gosh, that's how. What? That's the size. We're all What's leaning forward in our chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's see what is this? Is in one of my old Imperial Guard boxes. Okay. And it's like here are the infantry. Some of these are Russians and some of these are Americans. You now they're all like a little base. They got their own little base. They're all laying oh, down. They're already based. Yeah. Okay. And basically, these are just representation of when we're playing um, micro armor. Oh, I remember when that. Oh, was yeah, I remember that. Popular. We used to play a ton of micro armor, so I got a whole bunch of it here. Sitting. Uh, it's still a thing. I mean, I know you can always play old oh, there's games. Plenty but... of, yeah, people still play it. Is it still like you could buy it, though, or not? Yeah, you can still play oh, okay. it. okay. I thought I'd saw that because there's a couple companies doing some amazing. I watched, yeah, I got down a YouTube rabbit hole. Uh, GHQ, which yes, is, they're they amazing. are the leading providers. And then there's, um, there, what's the other one? Uh, one is in Minnesota. Is Minnesota the GHQ? I can't remember. Uh, but yeah, it's like I got a bunch of micro armor too. Okay. I have, of but it's all do. World War II. Or, okay. or no, it's modern. Mel has a whole, and his brother have a ton of 
World War II micro armor. And I got mine's all uh, moderns. Okay. That's cool. And we're, uh, where is Payne Doc Palmer tonight? Oh, he's in North Carolina? Yeah, visiting family. Well, one of the Carolina. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think it was North. and The Yankee yeah, is rampaging through the South. Let's just say that. Yeah. He's on his way to Atlanta. <laughs> War Master is a fantastic game. It's been exciting to jump back into it. Yeah, it's like I had uh, War Master for a while. I had to chaos and stuff but now they've got war master revolution which is that's that's there's tournaments and everything uh yeah. played with that rule set and it's it's well supported and free and i still got the rule book okay yeah i got the rule book too the old original yeah so many advantages of the small scale money table space time and storage yeah that's the great thing it's like you've seen i had yeah basically a whole company plus of infantry that's uh in a little box <laughs> yeah plus you could paint them so quick i think i mean i oh yeah even without knowing what it's doing i painted that one 15 millimeter guy and like nothing flat i mean you could crank them out once you got good at it to a nice standard well it's uh you can line the 15 mil up uh, ACW army up and line them up and just like, all right, I'm going to go all faces, all hands yeah. and just crank them all out. So, you know what basically everything is and you just go, you just start doing parts and you just assembly line, paint them out. Yep. Unlike when you're doing for the most part, 28s, then it slows down a bit, but I still try to assembly line, paint those things too. Yeah, I do too. Only I do them in smaller groups. Yeah, found a ton of old War Master. Yeah, I see. It's like I see War Master stuff popping up all the time on eBay. It's a little more expensive nowadays than it used to be, but yeah, there's a lot of 3D printed options, Rusty. Yeah. Uh, what's the one that's the big one? Um, I can't. I can't think of who it is. They're they do almost most of the factions. They're extremely popular. Everybody's got them. Yeah. But that's options. I'm going yeah, with the old metal. The, uh, those tables for the uh, the ship game was four by four. Okay. That could be. What if you sewed them together? Yes. Yeah, you can make them. They're beautiful, though. Windy, Windy boat, boat games, games are fun. Yeah, I've just never played one. It's not that I'm not interested. I'm seriously still thinking about getting into the uh, Firelock Games uh, oh. ship game. Yeah, the uh, Oak and Iron. Which one? Oak and Iron. Yep. Yeah. I really like the looks of those things. It's just so tempting. Black Sails. Is that? That's uh, Warlord. Warlords. I think it's a little larger pirate? scale. Is it? The and I and I last year I got a wild hair and I thought oh I'm gonna do a windy boat game and then and so I watched a ton of videos did a bunch of research and Oak and Iron was the one I would pick yeah personally I liked the I liked that. they both were really look, good looking systems and it so, also helps them per, I'm friends with the owners <laughs> well that doesn't oh yeah I remember yeah because you did some painting for them yeah back in the day. Well, just recently, uh, some of the Battletech stuff I painted up it was for uh, Alex, one of the owners. Oh, for his own personal thing. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking where you did some for um, Blood and Plunder. You painted some minis that are appear in the rule book, right? Or something? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's what I remembered. Sorry. Only naval game I nabbed was the Osprey Ancient Greek one. Trying to remember the name. Didn't play, but painted up the fleets were fun. Oh, yeah, that would have been with the uh, triams and quadrams. Yeah. That's kind of style. I, God, what the, I remember playing at the sh when we had it at the club. Somebody had some of that stuff when we used to play. It was some of the rules where you could shear off the. Um, the oars, 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no way. Yeah, remove their movement, and then you have another ship come in and just <laughs> crunch into them. It was kind of fun. I don't remember the name of the game, though. Maybe the actual name was Quadrium. I might be in it. Prime or Quadrium, maybe. Name of the game. You. Huh. Oh, Jesse's in the house. All right. He's back from, uh, you were at, he was over at uh, um, Game Castle tonight. Okay. He has to start assembling his minute his uh, Bretonians. Oh yeah, good choice, good choice. Did they cut hats or a printed union? Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Yeah, it just yeah, that's what I would have thought too. And Brad just sent me a message about BattleTech stuff. Uh, okay, we got. Uh, I have six mil, fifteen mil, twenty-eight mil ACW. Okay, okay, six mil. Yeah, I bought a few ten mil Pendragon because I wanted to. I was trying to decide if I wanted to do ten or fifteen, because uh, Little Legions. I don't know if you know his channel. He did a ten mil Pendragon ACW force that uh, was part of their club project for the year that they were doing and. That looked awesome. And I was like, hmm, maybe that'd be good. Then I could use some of the same terrain from Warmaster. And yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Um, and it was pretty cool. Um, but I don't know. They were a little tiny. And then well, the muskets and the and the bayonets were pretty bendy. And I, so I don't know. 15 looked like a little better. That's, probably, that's what I'll end up probably doing hmm. at some point. Yeah, I'm 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 still doing all my research right now. I can't make yep. up my mind. Lots to so think about. I, I am definitely going to for the next month or two probably just be doing a lot of eclectic different whatever I've got laying in a box somewhere and mm -hmm. yeah. up on just let things kind of stew for a while. I don't want to jump into something premature and, and, and yeah. start and go, ah, this isn't gonna be it. That's my thing. I, I think on it for quite a while, and then when I go, I go. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm all yeah. in, not looking back once I decide. Yeah, I'm that way about a lot of things. It takes. It, I don't care what big purchase thing I do. It's like I'll talk about it like in the like two years before I actually do it. I was like, you know, one of these days I'm going to get this. One of these mm -hmm. days, and then it goes. Then it moves into you know what. I'm definitely going to get one. Do this. I'm well, definitely going to, do it. and it's like there's this yeah. process I go through, especially like like buying a new vehicle or something yeah. like that. You do a ton when of I'm research. Gonna, yeah, when I'm going to plunk down a hefty, hefty hunk of change on something, I'm going to do my uh, research and I'm going to think well, about it. No regrets. You want to have thought it through about it a long time yeah. before I pull the trigger. Well, you got but, to, yeah. And Chris uh, mentioned CNC. That's the other. Um, oh, when or a uh, ship. Yeah, they had ship and uh, uh, small scale. Small scale armor in that. Yeah, that's right. We yeah. We're talking and about epic that armor, too. epic basically. Yeah. Micro yeah. armor. Micro armor. That's the word we we're using. And Europe, uh, Scadia. Okay. There are very good odds that if you are into Battletech minis, you got eight GHQ. Yeah, we used because uh, they were the same scale at one time. Yeah. I used a whole bunch of my modern armor that my GHQ models in Battletech as tanks. Oh, okay. And they worked fine for many years until we actually started buying the actual Battletech uh, armor. Oh, interesting. And it's like there's the same scale as the people don't realize is that the they battletech miniatures they make them to so they fit on the whole hex. Right. And oh, they're supposed okay. to be the same scale. Oh. So they're they're supersized. They're, they're like the, the twenty they're like the thirty-two mils of uh 
G uh, yeah. Wings Workshop. Heroic. <laughs> the heroic scale. Mm -hmm. They're really supposed to be smaller. Same way with the mechs, too. But, mm -hmm. but they like to sell their little cool stuff. Black Powder came from uh, War Master. Yeah, that's, that's easy. You can see the... Um, yep. The birth Rick, port, Pre Rick port. Priestley, yeah. and it's basically the same rule set. Yeah. 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 Epic uh, Space Marine Rescue, the ultimate epic scale game. Yes, I have a ton of it. I love it. And I used it in Battletech. That was the whole reason I got into Epic in the beginning was to have infantry and stuff for Battletech. Battletech. Ah. And then we realized this is not a bad game. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So it got dual purpose. And you look in the bottom of a lot of my Epic uh, miniatures, they got numbers on them to represent squads in Battletech. <laughs> oh, wow. That's awesome. I made they they got multiple uses. <laughs> Forest Dragon. Yeah, Forest Dragon. That's who does the three D uh, Warmaster. Okay. Uh, so if you're looking at Warmaster, th those would be those are hands down the most popular, right, and they are gorgeous. And I've watched. There's painting tutorials of people. I mean, it's definitely the lead go to. And they have whole armies. It's amazing. Yeah. And that's for War Master. For War Master. Yep. I couldn't think of it. Thanks. Yeah. Horse Dragon. And that's the thing is if we ever come up with a new topic, we got to write it down because we, we went through oh, this. Yeah. <laughs> we we're like, I told you, you got to write this down. We were forget about it. And, I was like, and we were asking, like, what was that topic we're talking I about? Know. I can't remember. I, I remember and I still we, can't tell you what it was we, we, we talked about. And, so we should do that next show. And I can't. I thought Paul, somebody had to written it down. Well, Palmer told me to write it down, and I and did. I told you to write it down. Oh, you <laughs> told hilarious. me to write it down. It's yeah, like, I know somebody. We told can't me to even. Write, write, write I can't even down. remember who told you to re remember to write it down. That's and I definitely sad. can't remember what they told me to to, to write down. <laughs> you get to our musty age, you forget things. It was a yeah. whole topic. Come on, Tim. Oh. And I, that's why I said we're going to have to go back and watch the show just to see what that yeah, thing it was. Because it was a good idea. Yeah, it was. Yeah, what I it was, I can't remember. I don't have very many of those. I need to write them down when they happen. If you have a good idea, yeah. Well, we have it yeah. recorded for posterity. We'll go back and watch it. <laughs> that was Tim's good idea. Yeah. Remember that? <laughs> well, my question is, was it on the live stream or was it when we were talking just before we went live? Oh, see, that's a good question. I'm thinking it might have been the end towards the end of our live stream. I thought it was during the live stream because we got into the kind of down a side trail with your comment. Uh, yeah, and then we decided uh, it was the whole. I it'd think be a it, good topic. To I talk think it was about. during the end toward yeah after halfway <laughs> point of the show somewhere. <laughs> if you don't want to watch the whole episode. <laughs> And GM Cody says, I want to play Epic again so bad. I'm just looking at a big stack of Epic models right now and going, yeah, it'd be kind of cool, wouldn't it? Be kind of cool. Boxes upon boxes of them. And that's no exaggeration. <laughs> yeah. And then Jesse says, I just got into Warhammer Old World. He's got into Bretonians. Yeah, nice. So has Jesse played... Uh... Warhammer Fantasy, though, or not at all? No, he's never played. He plays uh, Age of Sigmar. Oh, okay. So those orcs wow. that are all painted up by me, those are for him. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I painted well, up welcome to the old art. world. <laughs> yeah. So now we're going to nice. get him into Bretonians. That's yeah, a nice thing, too, about art. for the those two starter sets are good because if, you've, if you haven't been exposed to Warhammer at all uh, or, or the old world, it, you know, it comes with the book, the templates, the dice, you know, a 1250 starter army, uh, all the rules and the points for the army, er, er, you know, everything you need to go for a reasonable price. And if you like it, you can add to that, you know. Yeah, it's like a typical game that we always played was 2,000 or 2,500 points. Yep, 2,000, pretty common. So is Jesse going to paint? I wonder, I was asking if he's going to paint his knights 
all like the same color like GW did or individual? Uh, we discussed it and we're thinking of red and black for the most part. And like they did on the box. I mean, yeah. That's how GW went. There you go. Cool. So it would be a basically a Brettonian house or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. It'll speed up the painting if he does it that way, you know? Yeah. If you want to get discouraged. Uh, too many games, not enough time. That is definitely a fact. Oh, good lord! Well, yeah, not ever. Yes. Many warm ups in the house. Hey. Yes, Firelock's new game uh, come out and Kickstarter sounds fun. Now, who would have that Kickstarter? Where did I? Put hmm. it? Hmm. Uh, of anybody I know that would have the Kickstarter, it would be that guy. <laughs> yes. It's right yeah. over here. I haven't it's done a video on it. Is it Blood and Crowns? Yes. Yeah. Looks I have cool. the box that came in the well, mail. Do a video so I can see what I didn't what I didn't do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it looked cool. Yeah. 100%. So yeah, it came this week. I got it uh Monday. I think it was Monday. I'm not a big Kickstarter guy, but I did back a Kickstarter that closed last week. Very, very small um, by Sally Forth Miniatures. Okay, I've heard of them. Yeah, in the UK. And it was um, the Spanish sculptor, self-taught. She has done some Kickstarters for her STLs in Sally Forth Miniatures. Then is slowly releasing those same miniatures in metal. Okay. And they were doing he one of the first well the first line that he started with were basically Bretons. So yeah the Bretonians. Mm -hmm. And they are in the flavor of the old school. They're all metal, which being an old an old hammer guy, you know, an old musty dude, that kind of hit the bells for me. And uh so anyway, so I did I did back that. There was just a small, it funded, but it was just a small group of people. I think there were only 33 backers. Um, okay. But anyway, so I'm like, that's supposed to, I think he's supposed to deliver in, in like May here. But that's something you got to share with people, you know, put it up on the Facebook page. Yeah, actually, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, I got a lot of distractions with, like I said, with family stuff that I haven't really discussed, but. So it's hard to stay on point on all that stuff. That does get in the in the way, doesn't it, Dan? Yeah, it kind of gets all up in your head too, and kind of takes, a lot of your, takes a lot of your space. space. Takes a lot of headspace. Yep. Oh, uh, uh, GM Cody's heading out for the night. Yep. Thanks for stopping by. Check out his channel. It, it is some good stuff. I think. People in our kind of bracket and, and mindset enjoy the stuff that he's got to share. Yeah. Okay. I will definitely do that. Uh, Jesse says, I haven't built any Protonians yet. Yeah, you, know, you just got the boxes, so it's not like you had time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think he paid, played Age of Sigmar tonight because they had a big event going on. Oh, okay. I think Thursday nights has become Age of Sigmar night. That's cool. It's just fun to see people out, you know, doing the hobby, enjoying yeah. games, getting together. I don't know, whatever they're playing. Enjoy it, man. Ah, the Franco Prussian War in 10 mil or 28. Ooh, that's a big choice. That's a lot of difference. Yes. Yeah, because that's a would be a skirmish game. Hmm. Depends a little bit like the rule set you want to go with, which he uh, Chris did mention. That his planes war rule set maybe he skipped it or didn't get to it, but was uh, his own rule set is what he was going to uh, use. Yeah, I might have missed that, but I did see it. And we got hmm. a very silent mouse showed up. We have the afternoon all for it's afternoon for you. For us, it's uh, eleven uh, o'clock at night or midnight. PM. Yeah, getting toward midnight. It's midnight for me. So. Oh yeah, you're a little east of us. Yes, I am. <laughs> yeah, I and he says that. he's trying to find his scaven. I know where my scavener are. My scavener <laughs> sitting 
right there. <laughs> Rusty has a Skaven army. Who would have thought that? <laughs> what can he turn Timothy around Arcana. and go? It's right over there. I know. His basement's like a museum. <laughs> And my wife uh, looks at me and says, you got too much staff. Why do you buy stuff all the time? Because I want more stuff. <laughs> stuff and it man. doesn't help when you got somebody like Jesse here that keeps pushing me to buy more stuff. Uh, ask Tim about his Lord of the Rings stuff. Or is that Dan? I've got Lord of the Rings stuff. Yeah, uh, I've got a ton of Lord of the Rings stuff. I tried to convince when they when that game first came out. I tried to convince the group we, we I was playing in that that's something we ought to look into. And boy, they were just not into it at all. I love uh, it. I love the books. I love the movies. I oh yeah, I love yeah, I love the out. books, the movies. I was counting the days when the movies came out. I reread the books before the movies, and I actually the only time in my life I pre-ordered that green, and I have it. I'll pull a rusty. You can't see it in the picture, but right back there. Yeah. I, I still have the box and I got each one. They came Lord, the, the they came out with the 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 green one, then the red one, then the blue one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Each year Games Workshop did. And I pre-ordered them so that it actually came. And so I thought as again, it was that same time period when I was knowing I needed to have some fun hobby stuff, but didn't have a lot of money. Yeah. And I thought again, that's one where it's a small model count, skirmish game. I'd have a point time to paint up 20 or 30 right. models per side and never played a game. I have basically <laughs> 500 points painted, never played. I, I don't, you know, I didn't have anybody to, one of my brothers would have played with me, but the, I would have had to do all the painting and uh, just, I, I didn't see it through. I was too, too many things, too much life, but I still yeah. have it. Not to change subjects really just for a quick second. Yeah. Uh, Looks like a normal flashlight, but it's my black flashlight, black light for okay. curing resin. And oh. I was curing something the other day and I came across this little thing. All right, here's a uh, games workshop. I put my little black flashlight on it. This is a green, it's doing nothing, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Ralpartha. Oh, yeah. It's It glows. Wow. I have that paint right here. <laughs> it's like I got a bunch of miniatures. Like I think I have some epic stuff that I painted up in that color. Yeah, and some fantasy models. Yep. And I guarantee you, if I put a black light on them, they would glow in the dark. <laughs> I have the raw part of the glow paint actually up here somewhere. Just to change subject for a second. Yeah. Wow, that was a nice little trip down. Who who knew Rusty would have that lane? <laughs> <laughs> I also have some rocks upstairs because I'm a geologist too. Is that yeah, they I, glow I, in the dark? I almost I major I started majoring in geology before I switched in yeah. college, but so I have yeah pretty good emphasis in that. It's fun. Oh, it is fun stuff. Rocks for jocks. <laughs> would be smart. <laughs> Not reasonable price in Australia. Nothing is reasonable in Australia. Oh, I know. I feel price. the pain for those people. Jeepers, criminy. Even with the exchange rate, they're getting gouged. I don't yeah. know oh, why. Yeah. That's hard. I watch uh, so there's a couple motorcycle adventure guys that are in uh, Australia, and they talk about bike prices, and there's like, oh, it's only 18000 I'm like, that bike's 11 here. <laughs> like, good God. Yeah. It was like, Whoa, that's a heck of a markup. It's not on Kickstarter yet. Uh, oh, it's Port Royal. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. He's right. I did see that. Port that was it was like a campaign system and stuff. And I was huh. I saw it on their Facebook post today when I was waiting for some tr semi trucks to show up. Uh, I've received the King's War, the Raging Void starter. Need a rule book. Oh, King's of War. That, you know, I know they get some hate by GW fans, and I'm not really in anybody's camp, but King's of War does look cool. There's, I do I have mean, the, uh, the rule books, and I do have a bunch of. of uh, I have, 
I have the green rule book right up here. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't buy the red one, but I have the green one because I, I was the biggest thing is I can't find a, a, a slot where my Bretonian army fits in yeah. the way I would want it to play because they they came out with the green late what is it, the green lady army, and then they have like kingdoms of men and then there's the brotherhood yeah and none of them quite really do what i want like yeah and so then i always just kind of stop i'm like okay then i don't know how to put it together i'm building a tons of king's war minis right now mm. yeah it's like they're for the price they're uh, worth it that's i sure. think their new stuff's decent you know, or quite some of it's quite good. If you like the, you know, if you just like the style, you know, and that's all personal preference. I bought a bunch of their uh, skeletons and stuff. I have a box of their skeletons too. Got ultra yeah. cheap on each new box. I'm going to mix them in with my undead army when I put them together. Yeah. They yeah. look, they're not a new kit and they look fine to me. I yeah. The skeletons cool. are really nice. You can mix match and kind of, build things yeah up. that's yeah then they look easy to build I, I think they look sturdy i like them gonna go transform and roll out night good night yeah <laughs> night clyde thanks for stopping by took a break from king's war to paint three mil or two <laughs> that's a whole that's a quite a jump <laughs> yeah it's small wow. stuff and it's Great. like Brad was sending me all these messages, and now he finally realized after I told him, like, we're doing a live stream. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Forgot the show was happening, and I'm off. I was looking at mechs a friend gave me, all metal. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. So he sent me a ton of pictures. Cool. My oh, okay. I was hearing, hearing, we were talking, I was hearing a ton of dinging as the messages were coming in on Facebook. Yeah, four hundred. Yeah, that's a heck of a price tag. Four hundred fifty Australian wow, for a Britannia box. Pricey. Yeah. Wow. And it's two four. If we can pick it up here for two forty five plus tax, title, and license. Yeah, and you can get yeah, and, and you can get it online even for like two forty, or yeah. something, and free shipping. Pirates of Mordheim. One thing oh, okay, I'll, that's that's what that um, uh, what that game that they're going to kickstart. I uh, just forgot it already. Port Royal, that's what it is. Pirates, more time. Yep, okay. thanks for the reminder, Chris. That's what it is. I did see that. Okay, it looked cool. I think that that could, if it's done well, that could be extremely popular. Oh yeah, I think so. Which which they should be able to do it well. Yeah. Getting Arcane Journal, maybe some more models for the army. Maybe ask Dan about 3D files for the Maiden and the Trebuchet. Uh, I think that one file I found for the Trebuchet that I looked up on Colts 3D would, mm -hmm. uh, would work good. And the Maiden, I think we'll just have to use a, like a basic sorceress or something you find on Colts. Yeah. You I don't know. know Highland miniatures, all those have have their you know sorceress, but I don't you know if you can. I don't do the three D printing, so I'm not sure if the you buy just that file or do you have to. Yeah, you would. I think. Yeah, so. you, a lot of times you just buy the file mm -hmm. and then just print it. The so Arcane what? Journal, I wouldn't get too crazy with that. I mean, depending on what your budget is, Jesse, because the what's in it. It's useful, and I, I did get it because I, you know, I'm like all in Bretonian on whatever's happening there I'm in. But uh, all it really adds is the rules for the Green Knight, which, yeah, sometimes you can add that, but no big rush. Um, and then it had rules for uh, a special maiden character. can't remember her name. And there was a special rules for a knight. can't remember his name exactly either. Um and then arm uh, an alternative army list was the um, uh, border, basically they're exiles. And so that's where they can use bombards and cannon. And basically they've kind of lost their chivalry. And so it kind of breaks some of the, uh, the some coach. of the Bretonian rules so that you can, you can have uh, 
you can use dark magic and things like that. You know, it just gives a, a whole different approach to um, the Bretonians. But otherwise, uh, and then a lot of the special magic items and things they add are specifically for that army. They aren't allowed in the regular build. So there's not a lot in there that you would need. You can always get it, but I wouldn't get in a big toot on that. Um, and then, yeah, 3D printing on the Maidens is still... And then the other thing I was going to mention, you mentioned the trebuchet. Uh, and while they are cool and they, uh, and I do, and Games Workshop does have one too, which you can't pick up right now, but by the time you're ready to paint it, it might be out. But it looks like they nerfed the uh, ranged weapons uh, quite a bit. People have commented on them. I'm trying to remember what the reason was if it's, if it had to do with, they're they're less effective, and yeah. everybody's even talking about that. That you know they definitely nerf those, so you know it's not as much of a must-have. <clears throat> I don't think as it as it would have been like an eighth edition. I think you really kind of they were pretty strong in eighth edition, but not as much here. So you know whether you get in a big rush to get one of those, it, it's cool though. But yeah, yeah it's, it's fine. I got a where I think a free one I can download and just bring yeah, okay. it out. So otherwise, Highland Miniatures or um, what's the other one? There's two of them that do all the Bretonian stuff. Uh, yeah, I'll, ah. to... <clears throat> I'll think of it and I can I can send it to you. But they do some almost exact, you know, copies of what it was. <laughs> Yeah, some of the stuff you see is like look like almost identical copies of. Niche. I've got a couple of the old metal ones that I'd picked up through the years, um, so I hadn't looked too far much further than that. I think the last time I seen a trebuchet on eBay was like a hundred something bucks. Yeah, I I picked mine up I think for like fifty bucks, brand new in the box. I just, you know, this was back before. This maybe. COVID when you could still get things kind of reasonable if you just kind of mm -hmm. kept your powder dry and watched and then, then there'd be one once in a while that people just kind of missed or something. Hmm. But yeah, I <clears throat> I would say the if he added some grail knights would be more important as far as, I mean, there's some of the best knights in the old world. Um, supposedly there's some empire knights that maybe stat wise are a tad stronger, but the grail knights yeah. are just tough and so it just even a unit of six of those uh even if you converted you know just bought a box because it'd be cheaper if you bought a box of 12 of the knights of the realm which can also be used as knights errant by the way um but you could you could convert them in a way or paint them in a way to make them grail knights and i think that'd be more better use of your points than a trebuchet probably at this point but you know whatever is fun is what you should do you know yeah if it sounds cool you should do it the rule of cool some friends tried it that game at the, that's a pirate mortem at uh Deathcon. Oh, Deathcon. i'm thinking of trying to go to a Depticon next year and you know i think i might so i don't know rusty not, if you're in you know what's killing me is it's not too far from me but it and I really wanted to go this year, but it things just did not work out family wise. Yeah. Just, are you in, say, are you in Indiana, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So you're just it's, on you're on the uh, east side of Indiana. So I'm on the east side of Indiana, but it wouldn't be that far to go. Yeah, I've already looked you're at closer it. to it than we are. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yes, I am. Yep. I mean, it's within driving distance for me easy yeah yeah i bet it mm. for us it's a, about a six hour drive from des moines mm, be about somewhere maybe, in there maybe three for me yeah it doesn't take long to drive across the indiana no, no. going the other way though, it takes a while <laughs> yeah uh highland games is uh ventures is Highland Miniatures is a great company for files. Yeah, we're just trying to find figuring that out tonight. Just dropped the finished project of Seventh Crucius Lancers in the uh, Facebook group. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. 
Let's check it out. You know, yellow and green. Regiment size. Oof. That's a lot of Oof, mechs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> mechs and vehicles. I picked up some foot knights tonight for a box set I got and getting the journal for fluff and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. There is some good fluff and there's also some uh, images and some uh, painting suggestions. And yeah, I mean, it, it, for the money, it's, I just, you know, I didn't know if he was on kind of a tighter budget, you know, and, yeah. it, but it's, it's worth buying for, for what it is. It's just, there's nothing major in their rule wise or new unit wise, unless you're going to that, uh, that other, I uh, can't even remember what they call it, but yeah, border. Yeah. Cause I got the tomb Kings journal or exiled army. It's something yeah. like that. The tomb King journal is, basically the king's army the royal army yeah they add one extra army thing usually yeah but the foot knights look cool too and so yeah the, those should be fun to paint up and that's a new unit from the old world that they never have had yeah maybe back in third edition but yeah titan forge titan forge uh Titan Forge was they made knights and stuff uh, for like 40k style. I was gonna say it sounds familiar. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Empire miniatures do some Bretonians. Okay. Empire miniatures. Those uh, actual physical uh, metal miniatures or plastic or something. I don't recognize that. And I thought I knew all the Bretonian like stuff. I'm missing that one. Brown, green, bright greens to match the green with the CGI mouse map maps. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's the Crucius Lancers. Going to get the Pegasus Knights also. Yeah, I'd say the Pegasus Knights is a good... Uh, yeah, because you'll get three in the box set. You can use another three pretty easily and for the money. And they're cool models. Yeah, they're, yeah six, they're three useful. Knights isn't a lot of firepower to hit somebody with. It's, no. They become more of a uh, harassment small unit. Um, my and experience you, with them. And you can make a larger unit, or you can have two units of three, because yeah. I think three is the minimum size, if I remember right, in the old world. Um, so you could add more, have have six or four or five or six, or two units of three. Yeah, my experience would have been that you're able to, it's like you're moving your, your knight, your mounted knights forward, and you can mm -hmm. use the Pegasus knights to hold the unit up and from being charging you and allowing your knights to go in yeah it's so charge. that your knights don't get flanked by some fast moving units on the side yeah. or or go up and try to you know lock down some of their um artillery or or um yeah even if they're gonna die if they can slow somebody down a turn or two yep and that's the whole purpose of them and uh, yep. your even your peasants do a good job of uh just being uh, speed bumps yeah ex well and it sounds like the uh Men at Arms have gotten where they're basically what do they call it? Stead, basically, they're steadfast. Um, yeah. 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 Especially, like, and they got a special rule, I think, where they got the knights, somebody of the knightly order near them, they're more robust. So, yeah. And then you can add a new dude in there. He's basically like a, he's like a grail monk, I think they call him. And he does, I can't remember now exactly, he does something that also makes him harder. Uh, uh, more likely to stand their ground. Yeah. That's that sounds like it was from the old book. Didn't that when the the wasn't the yeah they're taking some of the old uh, rules from all the different editions and smattered them in and kind of yeah. rewrite them a little bit. So uh, it's it's kind of nice that we're seeing some of the stuff from old games being pushed into it. I like the land formation. I think it's cool. Yeah, I'm glad they brought that yeah. back. Okay. okay, they were STL files. He's saying Empire min miniatures or STLs. Okay, okay, I'm gonna write that down. I'm I'm doing research here. Yeah, I see that. 
It's a good idea, Rusty. You should write that down. I don't know the 3D printed uh, manufacturers as well because I'm. It's not as accessible for me, so I, I'm more up on yeah, Bretonians that are metal or plastic <laughs> that you yeah. can proxy. Lots of old men in my classic Balchuk group. They can't see them on. The <laughs> <laughs> That's like cheating. Taking advantage wow. of an old man. <laughs> That's oh, awesome. Man. You're allowing them blend into the map, so it's like camouflage. Well, it does work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have to run, guys. Good night. Good night, good night Chris. Yeah, good night, Chris. Good to see Hi, you. Chris. Man, we're probably should be cutting down here soon ourselves. How should I build up the men at arms of foot knights? Foot knight, I was thinking swords. Yeah, sword and board. That's the way to go. I, mm, I don't know. I was re I've been reading about them. All the Bretonian sites are saying that great great weapons is, is the only way. Game wise, uh, game wise, you're yeah. better off. They, uh, I was just reading about it today while I was waiting for a truck to come to load corn, and they were all in agreement, other than the cool look of the of the sword and shield. And I can't remember exactly they, since I haven't played, I don't know all the mechanics exactly how they work. And uh, I don't you have know. the book, uh, the forces of fantasy, uh. The Bretonians are their uh, men in arms. Their foot knights, the men in arms, are they just light armor they're, and shield? They're the they're the peasants. Yeah, they have just yeah whatever armor, light armor, shield. And, and then, then the foot knights are they plate and shield, or just plate? Uh, well, they're unless they got if they got a two handed weapon, then they're just plate. You know, or, yeah. Or you so, use sword and shield, you get the shield, but. It, Something but had to do with the amount of damage they can do. And see, and I don't used to be two handed weapons always strike last, right? But now it's yeah. initiative order. So, so I, I don't know all that, but these are people that seem to know and had played. And in their experience, they were saying they're all in agreement that great weapons was better gameplay wise. But I'm sure you know you can do them however you like the look of, and then you know, you just tell your unless you're playing in some high level tournament. Uh, you just tell them, well, they're two handed, even though they've got sword and shield, you know, for that yeah. game. Whatever. Well, back you can't the model day, them both ways. <laughs> we had the uh, the chaos warriors, they can have yeah. a halberd, right? And I have all my guy chaos warriors that have a halberd because you could buy the actual kit, you get the halberd. And I had them as the shield on their back, and you got the halberd, mm -hmm. so it's like. They can have a shield in halberd, which is only a plus one, or mm -hmm. they could just turn around and have it two handed. And well, you could do it that way, right? Yeah. So and that's how I outfitted my guy. So it's like if you're facing off against somebody that has heavy toughness, I wanted to have the extra. Oh, right. And if I'm not mistaken, on the Bretonian men at arms, they can be. Uh, the rules say that you can you can decide before the combat if they're going to use their weapon as a spear or as a halberd. Yeah. And it has two different, there's two different, you know, there's an advantage to one over the other, and I can't remember now. So you can model them. They can be both, but you, you know, you just, which I can't remember. I don't have any of the 6th edition Bretonian men at arms. Uh, mine are all 5th edition, but uh, I thought you could only, they all came with like a halberd or a spear. I don't think you can do swords, can you? I thought they were all like a halberd or a spear. Yeah, the men in arms, you had an option. I, they, ha they had some that you could have that had halberds. Right. Yeah, I thought you, they were, that was your only choice was halberds or yeah, maybe a spear looking thing or something. But I, in I the game, one you. Point, one point in time, they could. You, you could arm them with both and then before the combat you had to choose but then you had to ch stay with that choice throughout the combat so you right you had a, yes a weapon, you, you you thought you needed the extra save then you took you know you did hand weapon shield if you needed to do damage you used your yep. right and so the yeah that's that's how it is in the old world it sounds oh, like yeah. in every game i've seen they just have them all modeled the same and then you you say you yeah. know what they're using um so it didn't sound like that's a big hang up or a real big decision to make 
Now that's why I always say just like the sword and board go that route unless yeah. they have a specific. I don't way. think the men at arms have a, a choice of a sword. I think they're all halberds. Yeah, no, that wouldn't be that bad. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just it gives them it. plus one. So yeah, they're looking at what four to strength. So they bad. Mm hmm. Right. And that's the same as having the the great swords with the empire. Their whole job was to just go in and slice and dice. Yep. yep. That was their mission. Or the uh, sword master. Oh, survive or not? Just go in there and kill something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do some damage. So true. And he says, I really like the new plastic Bretonians. Yes, I like the looks of them. It started as a joke, but then they did miss the mix because they couldn't see. <laughs> <laughs> Camo, camouflage. It works. <laughs> as I said, it's probably our last one. We should be. Yeah, I do down. need to get to bed. I got to get up before six in the morning. So, yeah. I need to find some big fancy uh, big then for the good guys there. It's sold out. Yeah, it's like I need the forces of fantasy myself. Uh, oh, yeah. The foot knights and, are the knights of the realm on foot. And also the knight lancers formation is really good. Okay. The foot knights are the knights of the realm on foot. Also the knight lancers. Yeah, the, the lance formation is, is really good. And I like it that they brought that back from 5th edition. Yeah. And for the bowman, it stakes worth it to. Sorry, I asked me questions. Yeah, no, yeah, the stakes are, are worth it. You tend not to move your archers, <clears throat> and then if you can put them on a the hill, you want them on a the hill anyway. Yeah, but uh, it just helps they, with charges. <clears throat> yeah, it helps you. Yeah, because eventually you're going to somebody's probably going to come after them, and then that gives them some defense. Especially if they are for like the point they have. They're uh, extremely cheap, so. Because you have somebody like me will send frick and frack their man mana cores and uh, go rampaging into your backfield. Yeah. Yep. All right. Yeah, I do need I don't need, need to bug out if you guys want to keep going, but I'm going to have to. Yeah, I'm going to shut her down. Yeah. I'm, it's been uh, two and a half out. hours. I got to go check cows, <laughs> see if anybody's having a baby, and then I got to get up early because we're starting to been selling corn so i gotta look the trucks will be there to load so i gotta start doing that well life is a we all appreciate experience. your efforts in selling corn because yeah, without well, you selling that <laughs> corn we're in trouble what are you gonna do yeah. without corn well we, we all do hungry. our we all do our parts you know everybody's corn got an important part everything. corn oil <laughs> yeah it's everywhere. exactly all right well, we're going to be right. in two weeks. We'll be over in Palmer's channel. I yeah. probably won't be around because I'll be recovering from my surgery. Yeah, good luck with that. Oh, that's right. I'll be God, reconstructing. What, what day is it? What day is Wednesday, the 10th. Wednesday. Okay, 10th. I knew it was somewhere in the... Yeah, yeah and the show is going to be on the 11th, so I'll be in pieces. <laughs> being put back together you probably hopefully you're drugged <laughs> well they say it's going to be about four hours on the table so i hope the wow, guys sleep well hours. the night before guy or gal a lot of work Man, i could do it in two cool. <laughs> the lowest bidder says he can do it too wow i've let it's like what is it i slept in the uh and Tom Bodette and I slept in a uh, what is it a place that I can do that in two hours. <laughs> I can name that song in two notes. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> All oh, right, did it without oh, the anesthesia too. All right, everybody, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Yeah, good to see everybody. Right. Thanks for stopping by. All right, good night. All right, guys. We'll good night. Night. <laughs>